You don't want to fuck with the national no. airport just no. in general. Yeah, so I don't carpeted airport, correct? I don't like carpeted airports. I don't think so. Man, maybe I'm thinking. You of New can Orleans. sleep on them. Nah, but it's it's something about carpeted airports, like, dude, people spill shit in airports. Where does that go? Yeah, it just I, stays there. On today's part of my take, we have a twofer for the people. Uh, we have Coach Lovey Smith getting ready for the Texans Bears. We talk his team, the Texans, his the best team he ever played for, the, his uh, high school football team, his time with the Bears. We also have our good friend Morton Anderson in studio talking a little kicking, Hall of Fame. We're going to do picks and preview for week three in the NFL, talk about every game. We have Fantasy Russell Wilson's. We have Firefest of the Week, a packed show for everyone. It is brought to you by our friends at Visible. Now you can switch your wireless service from your phone. Switch to Visible. Visible starts at just $30 a month for a one-line plan. Taxes and fees included. No family plan needed. That means you don't need four other people to get a $30 a month plan with taxes and fees included. You get unlimited data and hotspot, which means you can stream as much as you want from pretty much anywhere, all powered by Verizon. Make a move to switch to Visible at Visible.com. 5G Ultra Brand, uh, 5G Ultra Wideband and Global Calling available on Visible Plus Plan. For data management practices, learn more at Visible.com. Additional terms apply. The big moment from tonight, PFT, go ahead. The catch. Yes. The one-handed catch. No, it was – go ahead. It was the big moment of, for the night was the defensive score at the end of the game. Oh, yeah, the score at the end of bet. the game. I, yes. I had a dream yes. last night that there was going to be a punt return for a touchdown. I never dream about the Browns, never dream about gambling. I dreamed about a punt return for a touchdown. I tried to bet on the punt returner to score a touchdown. They only offered defense and special teams combined touchdown. I took that at plus 650, forgot that I had the defense – Jeff D. Lowe reminded me after the touchdown was scored, and I'm buzzing right now. Yeah, incredible hit. Uh, sorry to anyone who had a teaser out there, but that was our visible uh, one big moment from the night, the score at the end of the game that was inconsequential to the final result, but very consequential to a lot of people. So thank you to Visible to sweeten the deal. We are going to be giving away signed, pardon my take, footballs to AWLs who, use, uh, who send us their entry for the one big moment from Thursday night's game. Make sure to tweet us your pick and tag Visible for a chance to win. The pick better be the defensive touchdown at the end of the game. So tag us, and you might get a free part of my take signed football uh, because Visible is the best. Go check out Visible.com right now. 5G ultra wideband and global calling available only on the Visible Plus plan. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Visible, Visible.com. Check it out today. 5G ultra wide band and global calling available on the Visible Plus plan. Today is Friday, September 23rd. And PFT, I think Jacoby Brissett might be a guy. He is. <sighs> mm, I don't, he look I don't good. know about that. He, he looked good. He's, he's uh, their guy. He is. He's their guy, but he's not the guy. It was, there's, there's definitely a difference, too, because if a coach is like, he's our guy, that means we're riding this guy right now until our main dude gets back. Yeah, so he had a very good game. Uh, the Browns right the ship. They go 2-1. and one. They could easily be 3-0. and oh, And the breaking moves that I just saw and said, uh-oh, <laughs> breaking <laughs> moves. <laughs> Mike Tomlin was asked afterwards, uh, are you thinking about making a change at QB or play callers in the mini-buy? Uh, the mini-buy. heard it was the mini-buy. Mini yeah. yeah, I like that. His response, definitively no. Okay. So Mitch is keeping his job. I'm I know wait. there's Steelers fans calling for Kenny Pickett. It's the right move. But Mitch is keeping his job. I'm going to run that through the Mike Tomlin translator. <laughs> definitively No. It's a double no almost. I think it's almost too much of a no. It's it's that's a lot the thing. Of no. Like Mike Tomlin, if he really meant no, he would have said no. But he it's like when OJ Simpson, when they asked him what he pled at the trial, he goes, yeah. absolutely positively a hundred percent not guilty. Not guilty. Yeah. It's too much. It's me thinks the lady doth protest too much on that one. And it's actually funny because we we are uh we, we do have Lovey Smith on the show and we brought up the Rex is our quarterback. This feels like Maybe one of those moments where he's he's adamant Mitch is his guy. Yeah, I don't know if Mitch is his guy. I, I look, the Steelers are they. It feels like every week they have a different problem, and all of it can be solved. Is just T.J. Watt was healthy because they showed that stat 
where essentially I think they're giving up five points more a game and they have a half a sack without him. Uh, but George Pickens doesn't seem happy. Made a great catch. Doesn't seem happy. Mm-hmm. Um, was offsides on the onside kick. Uh, I don't really know what to make. Like Najee Harris sometimes looks awesome, and then other times their offensive line looks like trash. So, yeah, I don't so, know what to make of the Steelers. I don't think that they have problems that are going to be fixed by just quarterback replacement. No, I think it's just T.J. Like, Watt. Like it's t- <laughs> if you look at T.J. Watt, that stat that they showed, it wasn't just the sacks and the points. It was also like the team's overall record. Right. And like we joke around sometimes like with Jimmy G, it's like the dude's a winner. Just let him get out there and win. When you know every other stat shows that he's like an average to slightly below average quarterback, and you know giving quarterback wins as a stat is one that like there's a certain degree of truth to it where you want a guy that's a good leader, and there are some guys that are winners, some guys that are losers, um, but it's an overall valued stat for quarterbacks. I actually think that it works with T.J. Watt in terms of like defensive lineman wins for yeah. T.J. Watt. He makes that much of a difference on their defense where he's getting like triple teamed every time that it opens up everything. Their defense plays at a different level. But I don't think that the problems that they have to solve can be solved by going to Kenny Pickett. In fact, I think it would just kind of screw with Kenny Pickett a little bit Yeah, because if the they team put him ha- in an obviously flawed team. Right, right. I, I agree with that. Um, and I, I do root for Mitch. Uh, it kind of sucks. I, I, I feel like Mitch would have been great if he had just stayed like a backup for a decade and just been cashing checks like I, the new take case uh, Chase Daniel. So I do think that he – he has a career as a backup if right. he wants one because he seems like a good but, dude. Eh. He's like slightly mobile enough to be like kind of weird and dodgy if he has to come into a game and scramble for a first down. But the problem is, as always with backups, if they show too much as a starter, you can kind of ruin your backup yeah. reputation. So hopefully he just like doesn't just, show. Next game, if he goes like one touchdown, one interception, call it 56% passing, that'll be the perfect stat line for Mitch to pursue a career as a backup quarterback. Right, right, exactly. And by the way, so speaking of the Browns, I guess you, if you're the Browns, if you're a Browns fan, you have to do glass half full, not glass half empty, because you could sit there and beat yourself up about you should be 3-0. and But the Browns have the Falcons next, and then they have the Chargers and the and the Patriots at home. Mm-hmm. The Browns could very well be a 4-2 and team after six weeks here. And yeah, again, you could beat yourself up and be like, "Oh, we could have been five and one," but I think they could win one of those two games at home. So, big kid, I had a, I had a thought a second ago. What if the Brown? What if Deshaun Watson comes back later on the season? And the Browns are a good team. Like offensively, I think they've got one of the best offensive lines in football. Uh, they've got they chunt, run the ball. They've all got the they, time. they chunt you to death at yep. the running back position. I think he had like a, it's combined like 150 yards tonight. It was 160 yards. Yeah, it was awesome. I just love watching Nick Chubb run the ball. Yeah, and he, I, just, he just like turtles over. To, he engulfs the ball into his like solar plexus, and he like almost folds over it in half, and then he just starts moving his legs, and he'll move a pile of like six dudes that are trying to tackle. And the beautiful thing about the Browns, when you have a running game like that, it's it's like. Beautiful football to watch a running game like that and then watch perfect play action passes like nine yard passes to the tight end. Yeah, because everyone has to be ready for the run. And it's like, you know, play action is almost it's not a lost art, but it doesn't happen as much as it used to because teams don't run the ball the same way they used to. But with the Browns, it's like, no, you have to be scared that these guys are going to run the ball on every single down. Although Kevin Stefanski was like. He was doing some wild shit, some empty, empty sets like on like third and one and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think he was just he was getting freaky with it. He runs the pro form sometimes. Remember that from Madden when you have both your running backs in the game, like yeah. no fullbacks, but you've got two halfbacks. I like it. Split out to each side. People stopped doing that for a while. I don't know why. It always looked awesome to run in Madden. But yeah. I'm glad that they're bringing that back a little bit. They put like a, a backup lineman in at fullback. Yeah, they took a few guys out in the goal line. That was sick. But I was thinking like Deshaun Watson. He's coming back. Yep. Whether you like it or not, he's going to come. That's kind of his mo. Mm-hmm. But uh, he is. He's going to be playing quarterback later on this year, and the team is good enough to the point where they can get into the playoffs. Like, what if Deshaun Watson? What if the Browns go to the Super Bowl and Deshaun Watson is the quarterback of the Browns in the Super Bowl? I, I kind of because lo- like everyone. I would want to root for the Browns in the Super Bowl, but not with Deshaun Watson. I also like this um, trend we're doing with this show where, like, whatever game just happened, the winner of that game, like, 
Like right now, we have the Bills playing the Eagles, playing the Browns yeah. in the Super Bowl. No, but you know what I'm, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying though. Yeah, like, no, I agree. Like, I, you wouldn't like the Browns, it would be... the Browns aren't bad. They're no. they're a good team without their arguably like top five quarterback. What you're saying, and I agree with you, is the Browns and the Lions are the two teams that I think that if they somehow ever got to a Super Bowl, the majority of America would be rooting for them. Kind of similar to the Bengals, Bengals last yeah. year. But then you throw and in the, the Bills, I think, are in that. Yeah, the Bills yeah, are probably in that category as well. But then you throw in the Deshaun Watson part, and you're like, oh, maybe not. Like, I, it, it's actually the most Browns thing ever. Right. If they do, if they win a Super Bowl, and America hates, and America them. hates, hates the them. shit out it of them, it should be their moment, their 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 crowning moment of like, this team has never won a Super yeah. Bowl. Holy shit, this is incredible! And like, ah, fuck, they win. We don't like Deshaun they win Watson. the most hateable Super Bowl yes. of all time. Yes. So, um, I don't want to. Jake and Billy spent the night watching the game here so why don't you guys say something so it wasn't a waste uh do <laughs> i do think- feel bad because it is true like we do these we do these quick we've already taped the majority of the show so we only do these for like five minutes so let's i want you guys to have it feel like it was worthwhile was the catch better than odell's good question Ooh. let's have the conversation i think i think I, yes i have i have a, a okay convincing argument his, he was facing away from the ball, coming towards him, yep. unlike Odell, who was facing the ball. He did have it on his fingertips. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a touchdown. Yeah, that's my. that was going to be my counterpoint. But we're talking about the best catch, not the best touchdown. Yeah. Okay, so, but the the touchdown, like, it, it does affect how good the catch was. Oh, of course, in, in the distance but, of the catch. Yeah, the distance, the ball was thrown a lot further. Also, it was from Eli Manning, so that gives it, like, a little extra pop for Odell. This one, it's going to be from Mitch Trubisky, who's better than Eli Manning. So yep. maybe even, maybe even uh, makes it pop more. Yeah, that was close. Is a shorter thrown ball harder to catch? Ooh, no. Faster? No. I less time to look at it. That's true. Fewer, fewer time. Yeah. Okay, Jake, your thoughts. It was interesting how you guys said Jacoby Brissett might be the guy when Deshaun Watson's on your guy list as a Monday. Can oh, yeah, one yeah, team true. have two guys? Yeah, two yeah, guys. You can have two absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Kenny and Mitch. Two guys, yeah. <laughs> there it's it is. Called, it's called <laughs> knife and tower. Them were on your list. Yeah, no, no, no. They're both on my list, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I just think Jacoby Brissett deserves credit because he's playing great football and, like, he has been put in a situation that's probably not ideal, knowing that like you're playing for your own job, for your own future, but you also know that you, this isn't your team. Um, and he, I mean, what, what did we say last Sunday against the Jets? I think he completed over eighty percent of his passes. Like, yeah, he's been very good. I think if if he ends up if he, if they end up two games above five hundred by the time he's done. He might be in the conversation for best backup quarterback in the he's league. Been yeah, in some he, interesting situations with the Brady Deflate Gate, right? Didn't he take over? Yep, he yep. took over for games. Jimmy G. Yeah. And he also yeah. he might be uh, since Tom Brady's getting up there in age, he might be one of the best QB sneak guys in the league. We we, we remember when he was on the Colts and he would be the guy who would go in for Phil Rivers to yep. QB sneak because Phil Rivers refused to do it, uh, but. It was, uh, yeah, I'm happy for Jacoby Brissett because, like, this is his chance. Similar to the Mitch conversation, if he plays well enough, he will have maybe another starting shot, but at least a backup shot for a very long time. He'll have, how old is he right now? Jacoby Brissett, if I had to guess, I would say, like, 30... 32. No. 29. 29? Okay, yeah. So he's drafted in 2016. This is huge. So if Jacoby Brissett does stay, like, two games above 500... I think he'll probably have a backup quarterback job for the next eight years. Yeah, I think he'll be set, and that and that kind of is a guy. If yeah. you have, you can have two guys. You're guy sexual. <laughs> now, 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 Hank is just scoffing at us because we have completely diminished the initial argument. But you can have a backup <laughs> quarterback. That's a he's a guy as far as being a backup's concerned. He's a guy in terms of backups. Yeah. Yes, like he he he's the guy. Like if the game. There are certain backups that if the starter goes down, you're like, our season's fucked. We're totally screwed. Jacoby Brissett is in the camp of like, he's oh, our guy. He could maybe keep us afloat. You know what? You know what it means when you say like, he's our guy. <laughs> no, I've got, I've got. This is crystal clear for me. Saying he's our guy about a backup means we're not looking to get another starting quarterback off the street. We're not going to make a trade. We're not going to try to make a splash. That's what a backup quarterback we, is. We have our guy. He's our guy at backup. He's not the guy, That's but he's our guy. That's every backup quarterback. Dude, no, it's not. Brian no, it's not no, there's some quarterbacks that if, Chase you're start, Daniel. if your starter gets hurt, <laughs> Josh Rosen, you panic. Yeah, we've you just, smash we've, we've, we've every, you just described argument. a backup quarterback. Have. Yeah, no, we have. No. We've, we've, yes. we've flooded. There's guy inflation on this show now. <laughs> I, I, I'm Joe gonna Biden. agree. Yeah, <laughs> he did it again. <laughs> um, I'll leave you with this. Guess how much money Jacoby Brissett has made in his career? Ooh, 
Um, not enough. always a fun not game. Enough. Forty-two million dollars. Okay, so, so you looked it up. I didn't. I really Forty-two million dollars. Oh. <laughs> That's your count. <laughs> nice job. Record, the lottery. Jake. That well, was Jake. actually forty-two eight eight. Is that like so, a mini lottery? No, 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 yeah, no, not even close. Put it on the record. Wait, let me record. double check. No, it's forty-three. <laughs> it's rounded up to forty-three. So you're not right. That was a good guess. That was Hank. a great guess. Hank, I'll say it. it great job. Thank that you. was that's crazy. Wait, guess the next digit. Forty-two comma. No. Yeah, smart. Just do it. Smart. You smart. Have, that you was have ten test. digits. <laughs> he heard me say it, but he is eight. Yeah, he heard me say it. He heard me say it. He heard me <laughs> wow, say it. Hank got that Hank, one too. Hank, you're really good. Damn. <laughs> Shit. Um, but yeah, credits Jacoby Brissett. Uh, credits to the Browns, two and one. Also, I just like saying dog check. Yeah, dog check. Dog check. <laughs> Dog check. Oh, 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 oh. And what? Well, last, last thing. Uh, Amazon. Like, dude, what are they doing with the mics in the crowds? We can't. I can't hear the crowd. Yeah. It happened with Thursday night. We. I forgot to mention it last last week. Arrowhead felt silent. Like, it's, I want to hear the crowd. It's the loudest stadium in the NFL. I want to hear the crowd. It seemed really quiet, and they did it again tonight. That's one thing they got to figure out. That I guess they don't have enough of those satellite dishes <sighs> that the people on the sidelines hold. On, you need Bezos. to put those. Like make it sound louder than it really is. Yes, that's that's like broadcasting one hundred and one. I'd much give me some that. flavor for this environment right yes. here, Jeff Bezos. Yes, pump it up and pump, also pump it up. I think they I think they had more Amazon commercials during the Amazon broadcast tonight. Yeah, thankfully we had some college football games to distract us. And Aaron Judge, the cameraman should be fired from Fox. I think that was hilarious. That was unreal. It was, it was he, very funny. He treated the longest home run in baseball. History. He treated it like Aaron Judge put the ball on the fucking moon, <laughs> well, and then it was like. Five feet short on the warning. It's track. funny because like, you don't think of the camera guy's responsibility during a seminal moment like that. We think, you know, I heard Big Cat say like, if you were the Red Sox pitcher, you would groove one down the middle, well, so yeah. you would be on on the highlight reel for all time. If you're if you're a bad pitcher, if you're a bad, oh, pitcher, if you're a good yeah. pitcher, I wouldn't do it. If I was like a, a middle reliever guy who was like, I'm never going to be a great pitcher. I think I would lean being in be a trivia question. Yeah, being in history rather than being like. A, a no name, like yeah. I think of like Pat Light, yeah. like yeah. Pat yes. Light yes. makes funny TikToks where he's like, I struck out Mike Trout, but I also gave up like fourteen runs in a half inning. Like, if if that were my, if I was like, hey, this thing's probably not going to work out long term pitching in, in Major League Baseball, I think I could make some funny content being like, guess who gave up sixty one? Me. Flash in the pan, but yeah. like you make the flashes right. as bright yeah. as you can. Exactly. Right. You're, exactly. You're, you're probably in Cooperstown, uh, right? Yeah. Or yeah, at least you're your part of it. Is. You're, yes. par you're part of a moment in history. But we so we think about the players that are involved in the play, but we don't think about the camera guy because the camera guy knows that what he's recording, that's going to be what everyone sees yeah. for all time. Now your name's not on it, but it is going to be your piece of work, and you're going to tell like your kids, like I filmed that. So this guy had it in his head. How he, he it, how yeah. he was going to do like the cinematography of it, and he thought he fucking nailed, nailed it. it. He thought that this was a piece. He thought this was better than Citizen Kane, baby. Oh. He he had like the angle on it. He was like zooming out to show how wide it was going, and then as it zooms out and pans down, and the guy's just standing at the warning track. <laughs> oh, it was and Judge awesome. knew it wasn't gone. You could yeah. see in his face, like he knew that it wasn't gone. Every uh, like I'm sure the obviously the crowd because every every crowd gets duped by home run balls. But man, that Fox camera guy. Find a new job. Seriously. Now it's Apple TV time. Now it's Apple TV mm -hmm. time. I hope, hope so he gets bad. two. I hope so. Hope I, he gets I two. I hope he goes yard, <laughs> and it's the Apple TV broadcast that no one can watch, and everyone's going to hate the call. Of. Yep, yep. Um, okay, let's kick it to ourselves. Back in studio, and then we got a couple interviews coming up. Before we get to the weekend preview, our friends at Cross Country Mortgage were known for having an opinion here, and be honest, we're usually spot on. We're actually always spot on. Here's our hottest new take. It's not a bad time to buy a home. In fact, for some, it could be the perfect time. Look with low to no money down or refi options that let you draw a line of credit with lower interest than a credit card. Cross Country Mortgage has all your bases covered. CCM listens, understands, and communicates throughout the entire loan process. Provide more loan options tailored to your financial capabilities. Innovative technology focuses on what's important to fulfill your loan needs. Faster closing times than the competition. Stable monthly payments and low to no down payments. That's what Cross Country Mortgage can do for you. And who doesn't love swag? Get a free bar stool and Cross Country Mortgage sweatshirt when you sign up to refi or get pre-approval while supplies last. Of course, when you need an outlet uh, assist, Cross Country Mortgage has a more than enough arm strength. See if you qualify today. Visit ccm.com slash barstool now. Cross Country Mortgage, LLC, NMLS 3029. All loans subject to underwriting approval www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org Cross Country Mortgage, people first, 
people. They will make sure they take care of you. Tell them we sent you. Go to ccm.com slash barstool right now and talk to them. Even if you're not trying to buy a home right this second, get the conversation going so when you are ready, you have all the tools that Cross Country Mortgage can give to you. Okay, week three. Excited. We have our first Loser Leaves Town game. Interesting. Raiders Titans. I believe that you is think a that's it because it's I, I think two. Whoever, I think whoever starts zero and three there, it's it's a it's a wrap. Yeah, I need I need somebody to bring up the stats. I'm sure that by the time you're listening to this, they've already run the stat on Football Friday on ESPN somewhere showing the percentage of teams that start out zero and three right. that make the playoffs. And I'm pretty sure it's probably like six percent. Yeah, and now I did have um. There's a Raiders podcaster. I'm his name is escaping me. I apologize. I did watch his. He did the very smart thing where he like released his YouTube recap of the Raiders game and was like addressing Stephen A. Smith's uh, comments about the Raiders and Big Cat saying he's going to cut off his pinky. So I was like, well, I guess I got to click this to yeah. see what he said. And he had the stat that uh, four times an 0-2 team has made it to the Super Bowl and three out of four times they've won the Super Bowl. So okay. a little scary, but whatever. But it, but it basically never happens that and they make would, it to the Super Bowl. Well, his whole point was – uh, the 2001 Patriots were one of those teams, and Josh McDaniels was on that staff. So he's going to go into that locker room and be like, I started 0-2, and, and look what I did. So if Derek Carr gets his ribs broken, then who's backing him up? That's yeah. the question. I don't know. And then also he conveniently – let me see. where When when was Josh McDaniels um, on the st- – uh, when was he the Broncos head coach? That was 2000 and – That was with Tebow, right? Yeah, that was – eight. So, yeah, okay. So he conveniently also left out the fact that he, he put up the graphic that showed all the 0-2 teams that won the Super Bowl. And so the 2001 Patriots is one of them, which jo- he was like Josh McDaniels on that staff, and he just skipped over the fact that also the 2007 New York Giants were on that list. Josh McDaniels was part of that as well. Interesting. And, and they it, had went and beaten the Patriots. It definitely was in 2009. I want to say it was like 2010. 2009. 2009, 2010. And yes. 2010 was the, I think that was the, the Tebow year where things really fell off for him. Yes. Um, yes. So the Raiders podcast. I like to imagine that uh, the Raiders gorilla has a podcast. I hope so. Where he just like is in costume the entire time. Actually breaking down like serious numbers and analytics for the Raiders. One thing we didn't talk about last week. I can't believe we forgot about this. Stephen A. Smith, when he was giving his analysis for the Chargers, I think he said the Chargers were going to score more points than anybody last week. Oh, yes, weekend, I saw But that. also lose somehow. That's See, that was when that, – Stephen A. Smith has a few of these. Remember he did it a couple of years ago where he's like the Chargers have like Hunter Henry back. It's like, no, he's, he's out for the season. Yeah. He just short circuits every now and then because he has to be on TV like 75 hours a day every day. And then he gets his uh, information. I don't like when people own him on that. We make a lot of mistakes on this show. We say a lot of stupid things. Sometimes his brain flashes back like four years. Right. Which it happens a lot. If you talk about sports, you just you get stuck in a time warp a little bit and you think it's 2016. It happens to the best of us. I've and been... the only thing, though, he did take a month off. Mm-hmm. He did take a month off to with reset. The shoulder. With a shoulder injury to reset his brain. So I'd like to see a little bit more time after that before a new mistake gets made. I have uh, two weeks in a row now, both weeks of the NFL season, for some stupid reason. I write down. I, I'm the one who types the boomers while we all collaborate and put them, you know, put them together. And I, for some reason, I've written down two wrong scores. And so Monday morning, I've woken up and people have been like, "You got the score wrong. You got the score wrong. You got the score wrong." I think I'm gonna lean into it and just get a wrong score every week. Either that or are we? It's just, usually like two points off. Or we just have Jake write the score parts to the game. Yeah. No, I think the one one right. wrong a week, and this will test true AWLs. So um, the ones who are listening right now, you'll know that there'll be one score wrong a week, and then the people who try to correct me, you look like an idiot because it was just a prank, bro. Also, good luck fact checking this podcast. Yeah. If that's if that's your mission to fact check this, then you're going to spend more time running your fact check on the show. Than we do actually making the show. It's going to be like Bitcoin when they were like the amount of uh, energy it takes to make Bitcoin Not is worth more is worth more than the Bitcoin. The amount of energy it takes for your computer to fact check this show is far more expensive than just listening to the show. Yeah, it would take a room full of people. It would yeah. take how many do we have in this room right now? Six people. It would take eight people seven days to fact check one episode of part of my team. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's do um, our picks. We'll talk about every game. Uh, you want to give us the updated records? I think it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Uh, we have two groups right now. Me, Hank, and Big Cat at three and five. 
PFT Billy and Max at two and six. 15 and 33. Okay, so we're all bad. 31%. We're we're all very bad. Uh, You know what? It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Yeah, it's also how you start a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. There's also a big part in starting. No, that's just, that's a saying you use when you start like shit. Yeah, when you start bad, it's like, okay, we have a lot of room to improve on everything. The good news is we can't be as bad as last week. Um, And we were a little, we did improve. Oh, we can. We did improve week, week one to week two. Yeah. We and we can be as bad. So we I can think be worse. We, so who's in last? We place had twenty-seven again? wins through two weeks last year. <laughs> we had yeah, 13. but last no last season was different. Last season was so easy. We were we were we just saw everything. Big so. Cotton Hank went four zero in week two last year. It was easy. It was easy. It was easy last year. This year not so much. Okay, let's yeah. let's hop into it. Let's start with our favorites. We'll throw in some stats. Talk about the games. Hank, let's go. My favorite Bills Mafia. Oh. Okay. All right. Interesting. Kind of a square pick, but I appreciate it. And we have brought up the uh, O and in the last from the name. guy that's two and six over here. Oh. Also, Ooh. I'm also on the Bills. Okay. Yep. Sharp. Two okay. sharps right Two here. sharps. You and Billy. I'm very excited for this game because we're either going to. Five and a half against the Dolphins. Five and a half. We're either going to find out if the Dolphins are for real, for real, or if the Bills are just like no one's going to touch them. I think the Bills defense is, is going to shut them up. I think the Dolphins are good, but I think the Bills defense is that good. I think. I mean. Two. I think two rookie cornerbacks starting for the Bills because that um, uh, Tre'Davious White is isn't he, he still is out? Is he still out? I think I think he's still out. That's a, that's yeah, but and he's then, been out. That's yeah, no, no, he's been out. But then the um, really scary neck injury. Yeah, uh, which thankfully he's okay. I can't remember who it was. Um, I want to say Dane Cook, but that's a comedian. Um, no, it's Dane Cook. Jackson. Dane Jackson. Yeah. That was half right. I thought it was Dane Cook. Yeah, too. I thought it was Dane Cook as well. Um, so. Just something to look at: Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill versus two rookie cornerbacks. But the strength of the Bills' defense is in their pass rush and being able to get to the quarterback with four people because they never blitz. Yeah, they're not blitzing at all, and they're I think they're in the top five. I want to say in quarterback pressures. Yeah, they've been so incredible. They're all over the place. Uh, I'm also I, th- I do I, I will say though that if if the Dolphins win this, I'm going to start using the word hot shot from Mike McDaniel. Mm. Nobody's dropped the hot. Everyone says like, oh, McVay. One of these hot shot coaches. No one's talked about the word hot shot with McDaniel he's, yet. He's close to being boy genius this, as well. So it's hot shot or, uh, yeah, Wonderkind. Yeah. Could yeah. also be talked about. Um, I'm just at the point, too, where I, I'm hoping this is the case, but like Von Miller just goes to a different team every year and just becomes incredible. Like, could he. Could he have the most Super Bowls ever if he just keeps hopping around? Like because, Robert Ory. Like, w- remember when Von Miller, at the end of the Broncos years, is like, is he kind of done? And now he's just like last year and this year he's just Von Miller again. The thing about Von Miller is he's never like an intimidating looking person. He's never making like he's not a screamer. He's not a yeller. He doesn't seem scary when he's talking to the press or he's like just hanging out. He's like a low key kind of guy, and he doesn't look huge and jacked up most of the time. Yeah, but he's just so fucking flexible and he's so fast that he's able to just like throw people off like it's jujitsu. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, the the um if you if you uh want to look at cool Von Miller stuff, the ghost move that he does. And he did a double ghost I think week 1 where he just makes the lineman just look completely silly. Oh, it's judo is what it is. He'll yeah. like step to one side and yeah. then use their own momentum and then throw them behind. No, him. he doesn't even touch him. The ghost move he doesn't even touch him. Okay, there's He a- just literally just like it's almost like a, a crossover in basketball. He just shakes them and then he runs right by them. There's the ghost and then there's the augmented ghost where you step to one side, the pass or the uh, the offensive lineman comes at you, then you like grab over their head and pull them back and yeah. throw them on the ground. He's just he's it turns out he's really good still. Yes. Uh, very, very and good. And this is also the game where we're gonna have to update it if Josh Allen wins. That will be I think an even twenty in a row. Yeah. On quarterbacks with the last name uh, that doesn't have the letter O in it. O in it, yeah. Yeah. So something to look out for. All right, that's uh, Billy and Hank's pick. Max, uh, Vikings minus six. I kind of like this. Yeah, I do too. Game. I kind of like bounce this. back game. I like it. Kirk this. Cousins at one o'clock, or yeah, Kirk Cousins at one o'clock. So. Perfect. It's Kirk Cousins. Choice. Everyone loves Detroit. Perfect. Everyone's like, hey, look at Detroit. And then the Vikings couldn't have looked worse. The only thing that scares me about this is. We should start having a conversation about Dan Campbell, the greatest uh, against the spread coach of all time. He's thirteen and six. He's got to lose sometime. Well, he doesn't. He can just cover. Yeah, so it's yeah. He's, he's gotta, he, lo- yeah he, he loses a lot, but, but he, he covers lose a lot. A cover yeah. sometimes. Yeah, thirteen and six is a pretty ridiculous against the spread record. I have the other side of this. For the we'll wait for that. Yeah, yeah, we'll wait for that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, okay, you guys will go head to head. 
PFT and I have the same favorite. Yeah, Bengals minus five. It's my game of the over month. The Jets. I I love. I'm I'm terrified of how much I love the Bengals. I see six now. Okay, oh, it's six. Fine. Yeah, Even be better. Six. I like it better at six. Um, five is a coward number. I love. It's Burrow Dark Thirty. Joe well, Burrow has deleted social media from his phone. He's going. That's the LeBron, the classic LeBron move. Another Ohio boy, uh, Joe Burrow is. It is like a panic button game if they lose this game. Well, all right. So there's a couple reasons that I I, they, I made them my game of the month. Um, the first is as bad as the offensive line for the Bengals has looked, and it has looked terrible. I think we're forgetting that um, T.J. Watt and Micah Parsons might be besides Aaron Donald, they're two of the three best. I would probably have Micah Parsons one right now, but a healthy T.J. Watt is either two or three. So they're two of the three best defenders that wreck games in the NFL. That's who they played the first two weeks because obviously T.J. Watt didn't get injured to the end of that game. Um, the Jets don't have Michael Parsons or T.J. Watt, so I feel like this will be the week that everyone's like, look, the Bengals the Bengals kind of figured out their uh, offensive line. And then the other part, they lost to the Bengals, or the Bengals lost to the Jets last year. Can't overlook it. The Jets just came off a miraculous win, and the Bengals, their season is kind of on the line yeah that's what i'm saying it's a yeah. panic button game for the Bengals, and they the game last year was bullshit they should have beaten the jets yeah that was the mike white game that right? was the, that was the mike white game and also there was like a phantom call in overtime that absolutely screwed him over um i think billy did apologize for that game you yeah, counted yeah. that you counted that as a jets loss right it was a targeting call on a running back yeah yeah so um i don't think the Bengals are going to overlook this at all because they they have to win this game yes they're owing two so yes. it's a must I, i'm gonna say it's a must win I for agree. The Bengals. It's I not agree. A, not even a can't lose. It's a must win for the Bengals. Must win all the way through. Um, who's your favorite, Billy? Uh, it was the Bills. Oh, the Bills. That's right. All right, uh, Jake. I'm going with the Chiefs minus five and a half at the Colts. Mm. I think mm. it's a little bit of a trap line. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a very big yeah, trap line. You'd expect mm -hmm. eight or nine points, but yeah, the, the boys on the desert are licking their chops right now about this one. They're happy. Yeah, you've fallen yeah. into their so trap, big of a Jake. trap that you take it. I want to bet the Chiefs so badly, but. I'm so nervous because the the Thursday night game, Patrick Holmes threw like six interceptions and none of them counted. And uh, Gus Bradley is so bad against Patrick Mahomes. He actually he had a, a press conference. He's the DC for the Colts. He had a press conference today uh, yesterday where he said about playing the Chiefs last year when he was up with the Raiders. He said, I think earlier we played a lot of single high against him and did some really good things. Points wise, held them down last year. Um, that's just not even close to true. One game they did give up five turnovers, but the other one, Patrick Mahomes uh, was twenty for twenty four. Or sorry, Patrick Mahomes had five touchdowns and uh, like absolutely roasted Gus Bradley. I think he's something ridiculous, like seven and one against Gus Bradley defenses. Now, to so, be fair, some of those Gus Bradley defenses. Were they? No, that was that was post Jaguars. Six, that was post Jaguars. Six and one against Gus Bradley defenses. Um, points per game thirty three point two. Completion uh, rate sixty five point two percent. And seventeen touchdowns, two interceptions. I so saw, doesn't feel. And now Patrick Holmes is good no matter what, but it feels like Gus Bradley might not have the Patrick Mahomes stopper. I just saw I saw a stat the other day that said Patrick Mahomes was um, he had the luckiest. Luck when it came, when it came to interceptions and dropped interceptions. Yo, I mean He's Thursday a, night. But no, I'm, I'm talking about like over the course of the last three seasons yeah. entirely. So in terms of not just week one and week two where we did see a shitload of dropped interceptions, but like 2020, 2021, he was the most interceptable quarterback of all time in terms of like balls that were dropped. It's a skill. So it's a skill. So it's I don't like free throw defense. I, I don't know what it is or yeah, or like field goal defense to a certain extent too. I don't know um what it is. Maybe maybe like defensive players are so shocked yeah. that they're able to intercept they're like, oh shit, I'm about to intercept Patrick Mahomes that they get inside their own heads and they drop the ball. But I feel like at some point that luck has to start to change, right? The the game I was referring to that Gus Bradley was like, yeah, we kind of held them down points wise. I actually remember I think it was a Sunday night game and everyone was like, the Raiders are coming, the Raiders are coming. They were five and three and the the Chiefs were six or five and uh, four. So it was like, oh, the Chiefs are kind of down. Patrick Mahomes went thirty five for fifty, four hundred six yards, five TDs, zero interceptions. Didn't really hold them down. Yeah, Billy. We had that exact conversation about Patrick Mahomes' interceptable balls. This time last season, did we? Yeah, and we said it's he's probably now that stat is correcting itself, 
And then after that short term where we thought it was going to correct, he actually just kept going. Yeah, okay. Thurs- I mean, so Thursday night he threw like four interceptions. So yeah. what, what Billy's saying is like, we were just a little bit early last year. Now's the time when we're right about this. Yes. You could find the recording where we say like, yeah, he's due to be cor- the stat to be corrected. The market correction yeah. is yeah. It's, it's imminent right now. Right. And with all that said, I, I just can't bet the Chiefs because I feel like this is... I feel like this is one of those NFL rigged games where you're just like the Chiefs are the better team, the Colts are a mess, but they'll just figure out a way to cover or win. Yeah, I I actually I do like the Colts in this. Yeah. I like the Colts. A lot. We we are like um what what was a Christian Bale's character from the Big Short sitting yeah. in the room <laughs> getting calls from all our investors, yep. being like what are you doing? We're losing money, we're losing money. I'm just wait. Just wait. My system is right. Just Patrick Mahomes Colts. will yeah. eventually throw interceptions. Trust me on this. And then, of course, what most likely will happen is they'll win by three touchdowns. Of course. And we'll be like, wow, we really overthought that yep. one. Yeah, that's the thing. I could easily see 21-3 at half. It's the it's my old theory about being embarrassed. Like you, if If you make a bet, like when you're betting against Bill Belichick or Nick Saban, you have the added uh, element – that you can feel so embarrassed because people are like, how could you bet against this guy? Right. So if you bet on the Colts here... Like the Bills on Monday. Right. You have to know that you're betting on the Colts. It might be the sharp side. It might be the correct side. But there's an element of you could lose and lose so badly that everyone's going to be like, how could you ever go against the uh, Chiefs? How could you ever bet on this garbage team that is the Colts? So what I'm seeing in this game, in the deep numbers, as I'm exploring the deep numbers of this matchup, I'm seeing the Colts coming off an embarrassing loss against the Jaguars. Correct. And that's everybody's burying the Colts. Everyone's like, yeah, I can't believe you lost to the and Jaguars. And a tie against the Texans. And an embarrassing loss as they tied the Texans. Mm-hmm. Everyone's burying the Colts. Now is the time to invest in the Colts. Correct. Buy low, sell high. But again, the embarrassment factor but also, is so there. But what if I'm right? Right. So no, that, I'm that, those, be- those are the angels Listen. and the demons on her shoulder. You got the demon on her shoulder being like, yeah. hey, uh, you could be the one that's right, the first person. And then the angel's like, hey, just just be smart. Yeah. Just be smart about no, it. I'm going to bet on the Colts on Sunday morning, and I know that there's the embarrassment factor. Um, okay, your underdogs. Underdogs. Henry. Colts. Colts. There yeah. it is. Okay. okay. I like it. That is, I mean, that makes me like the Colts even more because Hank usually spots these. Uh, will they be in part of the Hungry Dog Parlay? I think they should. I think they probably will be. Who yeah. else is going to be in it? Oh. Oh. Patriots. Okay. Mm-hmm. And? And? Say it. Say it, Hank. You know oh. you want to. Oh. Dolphins? You, you know you want Jets? to, Hank. Are you going to say the Jets? You know you want to. Titans. Oh, oh boo. Okay, boo, boo, boo. All right, uh, Max, your... Underdog. Uh, this one's gross, but I, the game is just going to be weird. Uh, I'm taking Jags plus seven at in L.A. Chargers. Okay. I don't hate it because we don't know what ha- is going to happen with Justin Herbert. Um, he might not play. He might get Chase Daniel plus seven against Chase Daniel is a pretty good bet. We also have um, – we've, we've discussed this before on this podcast, but Peyton Manning, what he did for this uh, league – it, it, it just his legacy is forever because he had just two or one terrible rookie year and then not a great second year. Um, or no, he was actually good his second year, but he had a terrible rookie year. So every quarterback that's ever drafted, you can just be like, well, Peyton Manning was terrible his first year. Um, and we have a stat for that. Trevor Lawrence is 0 and 9 on the road to start his career. He'll try to get his second road or his first road win Sunday against the Chargers. Only QB to lose his first nine road starts. And then win his 10th is Peyton Manning. Uh, so Peyton Manning had h- lost his first nine road starts. His first road win, kind of wild, Jake, was week three, his second season against the Chargers. Isn't that, that is, wild? That is wild. That's wild. Uh, I'm, I went to my stat guru, who is Uncle Chaps, when it comes to anything related to the Jaguars. He, just, he feeds me these sad Jacksonville Jaguars stats on almost a weekly basis, and the one this this week was the Jaguars are three and fourteen in their last seventeen games on the West Coast. Mm. Pretty bad. The Jags don't travel well. What are they so overall? I, so I was thinking about because <laughs> that. that's one of those ones like they stink overall. They do stink overall. What are they overall but, without the Colts? <laughs> but but if you think about it this way, this means that they they stink for like a longer period of time. Right. If the, if if it's, if it's uh, seventeen games going back that far, because remember it wasn't that long ago. 
that they had Blake Bortles and they were a dominant team. Yeah, they were a play position. away from the Super Bowl. It's fucking Miles Jack. Yeah. All right, your underdog, PFT. I'm also doing the Colts. Oh. Sam Ellinger vibes. It's, he might get nice. in. He might get in. Uh, he might be activated. There, it seems that the crowd in Indy is, is turning on Matt Ryan so soon. Yeah. They're just, they're just turning on the entire franchise. Also, this this entire uh, Colts breakdown is subject to change depending on whether or not Jim Irsay opens the roof or closes. I'm banking on an open roof, so if he does tweet out that the roof is closed uh, at some point after these words are coming out of my mouth, I reserve the right to rescind my underdog pick. Is that okay? Yes. Can I make that contingent? Yes. That tweet that tweet means business for me. Yes. And instead, I'm going to change it. I'm going to go to the Lions. Okay. I'm going to do wait, the Lions wait. as my backup. If the co- if but the, the, does that actually count for our record? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying that it you r- can do two picks. No, I'm saying it right now. It's Billy. Don't roll your eyes at me. We young had man. something like this last year where it is we Jim Ursay's roof open tweet. It's a big fucking deal. That is a big deal. It's sponsored and everything. Yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna allow it just for Jim Ursay. Um, so if the roof's open, you're sticking with the Colts. I have every reason to believe that the roof will be open okay. this weekend. But if it's closed, what's the weather? What's the weather in Indy on Sunday? Um, I, I'll allow it. I think that's fair. He's, 74 and sunny. Okay, okay so that, it will be open. It will be open. Um, okay, my underdog is very gross. I'm taking the Panthers plus three against the Saints. Hmm. I, I mean, Jameis has a broken back. Yeah. I don't know. And I feel like Pain the, the Panthers are so bad, but a division home dog, I don't know. I don't have the stats in front of me. I'm going to say it hits at 75%. That feels right. Two Heisman winning quarterbacks. Yep. Fuck. I it's gross. I'm going to That's going to be one that I'm going to be very upset at myself on Sunday when I turn on that game. I'm like, "Ugh, why did I bet the Panthers?" This this to me has the vibe of a game where if the if the Panthers lose, then Matt Rule is officially fired. Yeah. And they might not announce it for a couple weeks, but, but he, he will be he can't fired. he can't reclaim his season after Correct. this point. Correct. Uh, Bill, you're underdog. You're- I'm also I'm going with a hard Lions. We're going only Lions. Okay. okay. So I like the Lions plus six. I think that they're looking for games that they can win to really go after for their record. I think okay. they know that they can beat the Vikings. Like, look, they're I not like going to show up. You know, if the Chiefs come into town, I think it's going to be a little less high vibes. But as they did the Commanders, Commanders, they're going to go after teams they know they can take well, down. They did almost beat the Eagles, though, in week one. Right. They thought that was a team they could take down. Right. Yeah. So they're like lions. They're hunting. They're looking for animals they can take down. The okay. weak, the sick, the, the commanders, and the herd. Okay, the got, commanders, it, got it. And I feels, think the Vikings. This feels personal a little bit at this point because I you're think, upset still about my roof. No, I, I took this before you even said. I okay. think the Vikings are a limping animal. I think the lions are going to bite some kneecaps and take them down. Okay. 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 Uh, Jake. I'm going out west. I'm taking the Cardinals plus three and a half at home against the Rams. Mm. The Rams obviously looked awful in week one. In week two, they did not close strong. They kind of held on for dear life in that week two game against the Falcons. And the Cardinals have a lot of momentum off of an emotional, crazy comeback victory against the Raiders. That, so, uh, I think this is public money marsh right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, McVay is <laughs> six McVay and one dom- versus Kingsbury. Dominant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You remember in the playoffs last year? Yeah. You remember yeah, how bad that was? that was? That was one of the worst offensive game plans. Of it. I don't even think they actually had an offensive game plan uh, yeah. for the Cardinals. It was like snap the ball to Kyler. He's going to run sideways and throw the ball out of bounds. He, that's pretty much what that's, they did. That was the game that got me blocked by Kyler Murray. Yeah. Uh, I said he was too short to play in the NFL. Well, did you see Brian Baldinger's video clip that he put out yesterday? No. So he did one of the Baldy breakdowns, and it was the end zone angle of Kyler Murray. And he looked so fucking short from the end zone angle. Yeah, he does. It was, it was tough. He looked like he was 5'7", and as the play went on, because he kept drifting around, he got shorter. You have to watch this camera angle. Okay. He he shrunk down to like it, it's like when Mario, you know, when he gets the uh, the mushroom and he grows. It's that in reverse. He got hit by a turtle as the play. Yeah. He got struck by lightning. Yeah. Like in in Mario Kart as the play goes on. Yeah. I just I I don't believe. I think the Cardinals what they did last week against the Raiders was like something that's just never not sustainable. You can't be down twenty nothing and hope Kyler Murray is superhuman for an entire half. I just think the Rams are a better team. I feel like the Rams are going to – they did They did fuck up at the end of that Falcons game pretty badly, but they, they were killing them. They were killing them. Uh, we're going to say Billy. The greatest description I saw of Kyler Murray is that he looks like a toddler running around with a stolen phone. Mm-hmm. 
That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. Or a dog. I know that feeling. Yeah, dog with uh with a pair of, like your socks. Yeah. Running yep. around the, the house. What do you think when Kingsbury, because McVeigh, I don't think McVeigh had Kingsbury in his wedding party, but he was invited to his wedding. That's just got to be like, I own you, dude. Come give me a gift. I No, that's, I kind of. Six and one against you. I, I kind of. I just beat you in the playoffs to get my Super Bowl ring. I kind of disagree with you on that one. I feel like it's better sometimes to be invited to the wedding to not be part of the wedding party. No, oh, no, I, I'm very much a believer in that. I'm just saying for their relationship, like their friends. It's got to suck to be friends with someone who just owns you. Yeah. Like, owns you. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, we're still friends. Like, at what point, if McVeigh goes 10-1 and one against Clint Kingsbury, Kingsbury, as a man, has to just be like, we're not friends anymore. We can't be. This is not fair. Yeah. You know? That, it, it would be tough. Like, what do you get him for a gift? Right. Even if you're showing up to his wedding, what do you get the man that has everything? Yeah. What do you get the man that owns you? Yeah, you can't get him, like, you can't give him your playbook. He already knows the Because haven't thing. you given him enough? Right. Right, six and one. Uh, okay, I brought my own leash for you to walk me around on. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Like it's got to be a little awkward. Um, okay, under over over. My over is going to be over fifty two and a half in the Bills Dolphins game. Josh Allen, best quarterback in the league. Best friends of ours. Uh, the Bills have two rookie cornerbacks playing. Nice. Yeah, I've known, that, I've known that. about that for a while. So Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill against two rookie <laughs> yeah. cornerbacks. I like that. It's a recipe for a lot of points. I like huh? it. I like it a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, that's going to be a fun game. That's going to be a very fun game. And maybe the Bills offense, like I said, if they just serve. Loser like, leaves town. They just fucking score 40 points a game. Well, who, who's who's to say they can't? Uh, Max. I uh, already talked about it a lot uh, over in Bengals Jets. I think it's just going to be a fun game. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Fun okay. game. You think that's fun a fun game? game? Yep. I think it's, it's going to cr- be fun. It's crazy. If you had told me 45. two years ago that Bengals Jets would be a fun game. Flacco, number uh, three, number three in Flacco. passing yards. Yeah, yeah, dude, Flacco is he's on fire. I I am worried that his arm's going to literally fall off. He's going to drop back to pass at one point, reach back, and then just a bloody stump. This mm-hmm. might be his last game starting. Yeah, so Joe, leave it out. out. Yeah, it might th- be your last time ever. Yeah, he's going to throw it out. It's going to be a, a Friday Night Lights moment. It's like this is the moment right now. This is forever. Yeah, do yeah. it, Joe. I like it. Okay, uh, PFT, you're under. My under. Is Dolphins Bills under? Whoa! Wait, are we still doing? We're doing over. Overs? Sorry, overs. sorry, overs. I got confused. My over. O- my over is the Patriots Ravens over forty three and a half. I like it. I like that a lot. I think this is this ain't what, 44. 44. For even better. I like I like it better at forty four. Again, this tells me I'm sharp with all my picks. Is is the lines keep sliding in that direction? So over forty four. Um, the Ravens defense is absolute garbage. It sucks. It stinks. It's trash. Yeah, Mac Jones. This is he has to. He has to be the guy in this game. He's got to be a guy. He's got to be the guy, he's, Hank. He's you got, have to. He's um, got to be. Yeah. Three touchdown passes. He's got to have three touchdown need passes. It, yeah. Okay. Keeping my guy. Ball. I think he will. But I'm saying he like he has to have a good game against the defense that's struggling. If Mac they Jones struggle against the Ravens. If Mac yeah. Jones doesn't have a good game, that's gonna it's gonna pile on to the guy conversation. The guy watch. The guy watch. I mean, that's all. You guys are just obsessed with guys. He's guy polar. Well, yeah. I never had a guy. So, yeah, yeah why, having, why wouldn't you be obsessed with the thing that you've never been able to achieve? Yeah, I guess I just can't relate. I've been I've been ODing on guys my whole life. Yeah, yeah. Where, where is your guy now? You he's in Tampa. <laughs> he's yeah. in Tampa. Yeah, that's true. That's a fact. Um, all right, my and the other one got suspended. My over is going to be um, Lions Vikings over fifty two and a half. I I don't know. Okay. I like that. I, just I like, like that. It. Inside, I don't know. The Lions. Short, short trip. Short Kirk trip. Cousins, non prime time game. Non prime time yeah. game Dome. against a, a, a defense that plays a lot more man than zone. Mm-hmm. He's just. And the Lions feel like they. You they're know, going hunting. Their offense has been electric the first two weeks. Give me that. Give Li- me that. Lions running game is actually pretty good. Yeah. Like they, their whole. Their offense is pretty good. Their offense is good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're over, Billy. I like Packers, Bucks. 41 and a half. I mean, we got two old dudes who I think are going to try to outplay each other. And it's going to be, you know, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady just swinging at each other trying to see who's the last one standing. Mm-hmm. The, I mean, I don't know why this is such a low. Well, because the Bucks might have the best defense in 42. the NFL. Yeah, so the, a couple things. The the Bucks defense, I think, might be number one. Yeah, I, I, I like if I – my own power rankings, I don't do advanced stats. Uh, for my estimation of watching the first two weeks, they're the best defense in the NFL and, right now. And uh, the, the Packers have nobody at wide receiver. <laughs> and the Bucks, the Bucks have nobody <laughs> yeah. at wide receiver. So the Bucks just hired – they just signed um, 
Cole Beasley, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. And, I mean, if you had told me, like, five weeks ago that Cole Beasley has never caught a pass from Tom Brady, I would call you a liar. I yeah. would say, like, yes, they, they've been together for a long time. I right? really no, he's, like – He's not I, – I liked it. He's like a, a, a scruffier version – of Julian Edelman. Yes. Like if Julian Edelman was an adopted dog. Yes. That's what Cole Beasley is. Yeah. Who, Julian Edelman was in a puppy factory, puppy mill. Yeah, he was a beautiful like, lab. He was a lab that you bought out of out of like PetSmart. And even even you can even go further that like Bill Belichick was smart enough to be like, "Oh, our old lab is getting up there in age. We need to keep him young by getting a puppy, Julian Edelman, so the old lab being Wes Welker." Yes, yeah. So they they kept Wes Welker alive for a little bit, had to put him down. Right. Julian advances and then now Tom's like, well, I need to. He moved out on his own. He got yeah. his own place away from his dad, Bill. He wants a dog that reminds him a little bit of the dog he grew up with, but he doesn't have the money to pay for a right. puppy mill. So he's like, he yeah, found, he found I'll this, adopt. Yeah, I'll he adopt. Found it on the side of the street. Look at this guy. He was eating. So, he was eating out a can of tuna fish in my backyard. Yeah, he was trying to cross a highway. <laughs> I picked him up. I put him in the car. Now yep. he's my slot receiver. That's and that's Cole Beasley and Scotty Miller. I I think in this analogy would just be like a, a cat that I, is cool. I think a cool cat. Yeah, I just, uh, Scotty, you know how people have cats and they're like, no, it's like he plays fetch. He's basically a dog. It's like no, just get a dog. Yeah, Billy. This one doesn't have all the shots though. Good point. Yeah. Good point, Phil. True. Good point. Good <laughs> no, but point. the Bucks, I mean, <laughs> the Dallas, uh, the Cowboys, and the uh, Saints are the two offenses that tested the Bucks. I still think uh, Aaron Rodgers could get something done. I the the side like if you were going to play devil's advocate to what I just said about the Bucks being the best defense and the Packers having a very good defense as well, it, it's just crazy that a total is forty two with Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. It is nuts. And all the quarterback well, league. Keep this in mind, though. Uh, Matt LaFleur loves to kick field goals against uh -huh. the Bucs. Mm -hmm. So he might just go strictly field goal diet. Yeah. I should actually – yeah, we'll hit him up and be like, hey, dude, you don't have to only kick field can goals. We, um, can we get a special bet in the Barstool Sportsbook on uh, – Over under field goals. For Matt LaFleur this yeah. weekend? Yeah. Yeah, and field goals made. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you're over – Jake. I'm with Hank on Bill's Dolphins over 52 and a half. Nice. Go. It's going to be a fun game. Yep. Okay. All right, let's do the unders, and then we'll clean up any games we didn't talk about. I'm going against Billy for the reasons we just talked about, and it's just it makes no sense. It seems disgusting. It's one of those, like, you hate it so much you have to take it, but under 42 for the Bucks Packers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Brady with no weapons is a different different guy. Yeah. He yeah. Still, we'll he see can if still, Julio plays. He can still grind out a win, but it's it's, it's – and he's – 45. Yeah. Wow, you're talking bad about your guy. No, I'm not. He was, he was, it was like that when he was on the Patriots. Like, if Gronk was out or, or someone was out, it was a different – Yeah. He's still a winning quarterback. He'll he'll grind out a win, but it's not going to be – These were the type Bet of – An explosive – I used to love these games when Belichick was his coach, when they'd like – he'd be out of weapons, and all of a sudden he'd just be handing the ball to, like, Aaron Hernandez 10 times a game. Like, they'd find somebody that has usually been, like, a sideshow – in their offense and make that one guy the focal point for that one game, then you never hear from him again. I just don't know who on the Bucks is going to take that role. Yeah. Right. Oh, Fournette. Yeah, Fournette. You know, he Fournette, said he promised, he promised touchdowns. touchdowns. Yes, yes. It is the touchdowns coming soon. Uh, you're under Max. Uh, this one pains me to say, um, but – Commanders Eagles is gonna gonna go under mm -hmm. trap game for the Eagles. Same yeah, time, big time. I just see this game being sloppy. Uh, I hate that field so much. <laughs> yep. And I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna be happy about this under, but I think it'll go under. I mean, it's a big time revenge game. This might be the biggest revenge game of all, which is scary because Carson Wentz is the number one guy. He where he does too much and it's a problem. Yeah, I think that's that's worse. Yeah, right. yeah that's no, worse yeah. for Wentz. Yeah, a million like, a million yeah. percent <laughs> worse. I'm gonna fucking throw it. <laughs> not good. A pass that gets us <laughs> ten <laughs> touchdowns in the first play. Yeah, he's go he's gonna try. He's gonna uh, do the reenactment of him killing. 75 ducks in an afternoon yeah. to the Eagles and, and probably fuck everything up. It's going to be a shitty day. That field does suck. It almost killed Jalen Hurts last time. That's probably the best hope that we have is just have FedEx field collapse before yeah. the game. If yeah. that happens, I like our chances and I love the under. Like Batman. 47 yeah. and a half. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, you're under PFT? My under, uh, I'm taking Dolphins Bills under. Ooh, just to be a contrarian. a lot on this game. Just because I saw this I saw this line and I was like, I want to take the over. This is going to be an awesome game. I want to root for it being awesome. And I got so excited about it and I thought to myself, PFT, what are you doing right now? You're just taking an over because it would be fun to take an over. And uh, so I faded myself. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, lot, lot, lot riding on this game every which way. Um, my under, I'm going to do 
the Broncos Niners under 44 and a half on advisors. Tommy gave us a stat. It was something like the last 45 primetime games. It's 30 and 15 to the under. And I was like, oh, that's why I lose all my money. So I'm done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to try to ride the wave now mm-hmm. because that was like someone tells you like, hey, here's exactly how you've lost everything. Oh, it's because every Sunday night we're sitting in the gambling cave being like, what's the play? Why not just take the over? Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. It's the fuck it play. It's the, so, it's, it's the play that you make when you don't want to think too hard about yeah, it. Yeah, so let's be smart. Let's start just, just doing unders. You know what you got to do? It sucks, but you have to do it. Here's what you got to do. You lock it in right now. Yeah. Because if you wait until Sunday, I guarantee you 100%. You wait until the afternoon oh, slate. Oh, for sure. And you're going to sure. change it to the over. You got to lock sure. it in now. No doubt in my mind. Uh, Billy. I'm going with Texans and the Bears at 40. I like that play. I, it's just... This game sucks. We're it, we're gonna talk to Lovey Smith in a second. I this game sucks. I've got a fun stat for you guys. Uh, out of the and this isn't meant to be personal, because no, that's fine. It, you just said the game stats, sucks. You understand? You know, this, no. Out I mean, of the top thirty-two quarterbacks, yeah, I in the NFL, stat. I saw a stat. I've been tagged. With this who has the times. least attempts? This will be for everybody else besides Big Cat. Okay. Top thirty-two quarterbacks in the NFL. Who has the least attempts? Passing attempts. Well, Joe Flacco probably has the most, right? Yeah. yeah. But the but he question was least. was least, and we're talking about the Bears Texans. It feels like it's right there, guys. It, yeah. One th- who's number it? 32? Can Jay. you name the, bo- the who, Bears quarterback? Who, Mike Glennon. Who's number 32? Billy, can you name the Bears quarterback? Yes. Who's number Davis 32? Davis Mills. No, it's not Davis Fuck. Mills. Who is it? Number 32 in the league. Mm. Billy. Yates. Ohio State quarterback. Oh, he yep. doesn't know his name. He doesn't know his I name. I blank on names. And that's actually sometimes. not the answer, but you don't know the name. Yeah, so, the, I do know so the number name. 32. Just give me like a yeah. second to No, relax. no, no, Billy. Deshaun not Watson. Uh, no, close. Fuck. Okay, um, Billy, the quarterback that's number 32 on this list is Dak Prescott. Yeah. Oh. So, number, but who's oh. 33? Number 33. Now you got to name the guy. Is Justin Fields. Yeah, there it is. Yes. So, out of – he's the 33rd. He's a starting quarterback, but yep. he has – Fewer attempts. Listen, we played in Monsoon week one. This game's going to suck. This game's going to be brutal. Uh, It also is a... It's a loser leaves town game in the fact that for the Bears that if they lose this game, we are... All the good feelings from week one are gone, and it's officially, oh, we might be a bottom four team in the NFL. No, it's officially just focus on literally moving to the suburbs later. Yeah, and getting a... A getting a Bryce Young. There you go. Yeah. They, no, the Bears have to win this game. If they lose this game, the season is – it's already – the season's not going anywhere, but I was clinging to the idea that they were a frisky team that would win somewhere between, like, six to seven games and win maybe one big game. If they lose this game, that is gone. It's more like, hey, where where are our yeah. three wins? So let's let's have that realistic conversation because I was thinking to myself after, after we lost to the Lions, who looked like a great team last week, what, what am I just, like – content with for the season i think it, i honestly think i'm such a fucking loser that if you told me that we went six and eleven i'd be like okay that's cool yeah i mean what about I, you i'm a bigger loser because if you told me we went two and 15 but the second win was against the packers i'd be like yes are you taking that's into, into account loser. draft status because i'm not counting draft status no i'm, I'm saying, saying if we beat the packers the rest of the, if we beat the, if our second and only t- Second win comes against the Packers. I'd be like success. Mm-hmm. So that's as loser as you can get. We are we are just tremendous. Losing losers. hurts, and I think that affects productivity. Yeah, as Justin Fields said. Yes, that's mm-hmm. true. That it does hurt. It hurts a lot. Um, let's finish up your under, and then we'll hit any other games we missed. I'm with Billy under forty. All right, Texans Bears. Good one. Uh, what games did we miss? We missed the Titans and the Raiders. The loser leaves town game. Um, I have. I think we might have a little bit of a Josh McDaniels. Uh, Derek Carr on different pages watch. Okay. They might not be on the same page because we had uh, in the preseason – I'm going to pull it up real quick. Wait, I thought I wrote it down. Oh, no, I, I did a screenshot. In the preseason, Josh McDaniels said uh, this quote. I'm finding it. Hold, please. Hold, please. Hold, please. Here it is. Josh McDaniels says, you can't win until you learn how not to lose. Yeah. That's, I believe that is a Trent Dilfer quote. Yes, but now Derek Carr last week said, we have to learn how to win. But first, you have to learn not to lose. Right, but they haven't done that first part, so it feels like they're on different pages. But it sounds like Derek Carr's trying to learn how to win, and Josh McDaniels is trying to learn how to not lose. In a way, 
Derek Carr is trying to learn how to not lose, though, because he's trying to learn how to win. Right, but he's a step ahead of Josh McDaniels because before you learn how to win, you have to learn not to lose, and he's going straight to we have to learn how to win. But they've learned how to not win. Right, but they already. have not learned how to not so lose. Learned how to lose and not win, but he's saying that he wants to learn how to win. Right, but they have not learned how to not lose yet. I think you have to learn how to win before you learn how to not I lose. I agree, but this is clearly a miscommunication. It is, by yeah. They're, like Josh McDaniels. Like, is, I understand exactly what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, right. He's saying to he his team, we have to learn how to not lose in order to win. And they haven't done that part because you saw the second half against the Cardinals. And Derek Carr's like, no, 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 no. We have to learn how to win first. I think first you have to learn that you cannot lose and win at the same time. Right. But it's it's... Just watch it. Okay. They're not on the same page. I've got that's a, a, that's a confusing message that's coming out of the Raiders. It's a red flag. Yeah. It sounds like it sounds like McDaniel's put up a, a slide on like an overhead projector saying something along the lines of winning versus not losing. Right. And then uh, Derek Carr like wrote down in a notebook, like a marble notebook, what it right. said, and then tried to read it later and his handwriting was too messy and just mixed it all up when he tried to say it to the press. Right, right. Um, exactly. A very sad game. In the afternoon slate is the Falcons and the Seahawks. Yes. Falcons at the Seahawks. I just think this is a sad, sad state of affairs. I don't know why, but when I see Falcons at Seahawks, 425, I just think nobody, nobody should be subjected to watching this it, game. And Bird Bowl. Here's something that's even sadder. Um, Pete Carroll went on his radio show this week and said it's time to let Geno cook. That's sad. Okay. I don't want to see that. No, I don't. I don't. That's like asking Billy to cook. For no, us. that's like I don't. I don't want that. It's like asking Jesse Pinkman to cook. <laughs> yeah, we don't need this. We don't want this. Uh, what you're offering, Pete Carroll, but he said it in a way that's like, yeah, we're finally gonna. Gino knows the offense. We're gonna let him free. It's I like, ah, is that a is that smart? It doesn't feel smart. I also think that Vegas saw this game and they were like, you know what? Who gives a fuck? Let's Flip just call it a pick em. Yeah. Call, call it a pick em. No, it's, it's impossible to handicap this game. Uh, fun stat last week. I don't know if this has ever happened in the course of an NFL game. Marcus Mariota was zero for zero on two Hail Mary attempts. So he had one to end the first half and then they had one to end the second half. And both times he just kind of drifted around for a while and didn't throw the ball. Zero for zero, zero for on zero. two Hail Mary attempts. That's like the old old Shane Battier. When he would he would uh if he got the ball yeah. at the end of a quarter, he would wait till the, the buzzer sounded, then launch the three, so his shooting percentage didn't go down. Yeah, that's why a lot of players don't take like full court heaves right. at the end of quarters. I also have a, a weird stat I forgot to bring up when we were talking about the Panthers uh Saints game that is gross. Matt Rule uh is one in twenty four when allowing seventeen plus points. You literally just have to out. score 17 points to beat the Panthers. That checks out. That's so bad. But but on the other hand, you could say that I, if you flip that stat around and you see what their record is when they hold their opponents under yeah, they're really good. 17 points, yeah, they're really good. They're pretty good, yeah. They're really, really good. So the that's, defense just needs to show up. That's a, that's a wild 17, and I think the league average is something like 24, 25, um, maybe a little less, but still, 17 points to beat the – like you can just walk into the locker room and be like, guys – Two touchdowns and a field goal. We win this game, mm -hmm. guaranteed, except for that one time. Because <laughs> he's one. What was that? Who was that game against? I don't know. That's a good question. Just Let based me... on vibes only, I feel like uh, probably the Falcons. I bet the Falcons beat them one time. You know, I, mean, I, mean, the I, beat, I beat, beat them one time. I bet the Panthers beat the Falcons one time. Let's see. Vibes only. I'm checking 2021. The uh, let's see. They won. They won. They won. Um. Nope. Where? When did he become coach? He became I'm coach. Looking at 2020. 2020. I don't think it happened in 2020 either, though. Yeah, they won. They beat the Cardinals 31-21. There it is. Okay, so they that's went the off. one time. They went off. You were close. The, the Falcons. They beat the Falcons 23-16. Oh, that's yeah. So we're right one there. Point, Razor, one point. If the Falcons, if the Falcons had scored 17 there, they would. The Panthers would have lost 23-17. The, the Falcons probably missed an extra point. Yeah. To ruin that stat for me. What a stat, you, though. The Falcons just Falcons me. It's it's quite something. But shout out to the Falcons. Actually, I don't want to talk that much shit about them because yeah, because oh vibes are changing. Will Compton, year ten loading. This. If they win this game just based on the promise of a Will Compton workout, yeah, then that could change their entire season around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we hit everything. Yeah. I mean, Monday Night Football, I, the only thing I'm going with that is that if you close your eyes and you say the Giants are 3-0, and that makes no sense. 
It's also a so whiteout game, Cowboys. though. They're, they're whiting it out. Yeah. So full, I think the full white kit. And it feels like uh, a game that Micah Parsons is going to like end up humping Daniel Jones after a sack, after his like six sacks. So I, I also think that like we had we had our fun with Cooper Rush. Last yeah, week no, was yeah. the week where it's like yeah. Cooper, yeah, Cooper Rush had his moment. It's not going to carry over. Yeah. If it well, if he can do one drive, if he can do one drive, I think the Cowboys can win the game. Jerry said that he would walk all the way to New York City if it meant that Cooper Rush was going to make it a tough decision for him whether or not to put Dak back in when Dak healed up. Wow. And I've also heard that Dak is on the field. He's he's getting back to practice cuz he has just a hand injury. Yeah. So hopefully before the game we'll get to see some of the hip activations um through the sky cam. Yep. That was an all-time moment. Um okay. That was our weekend preview. Uh, our Mount Rushmore bet this week hit last week. Reminder, Barstool Sportsbook. All it has to do is four guys have to go over 50 yards. Hank, what's your pick? This will be in the exclusive section on Sunday morning. Hit last week. I think it was like plus 185. Let's do it. Let's get a hot streak. Saquon Barkley. All right. Saquon, let's Saquon. go. Uh, no, got to pick Sundays. Oh, yeah, that's Monday. Sundays. Fuck. All right, we'll come back to you. We're doing Fournette again. PFT. You're doing Fournette. Leonard Fournette. Oh, shit. Okay, you took my... That's fine. I can switch it up. I'm going to go with... Uh, we're going to go with Joe Mixon. Okay. Joe Mixon. I'm going to go with my guy, David Montgomery. Texans uh, rush defense has not been good, and I don't think the Bears are going to pass ever. So, David Montgomery will be in there. So, Leonard Fournette, David Montgomery, uh, Joe Mixon, and Hank. Does it have to be a running back? Yes. That's the Mount Rushmore. Definitely has to be. Yeah, a I think back. it has to be a running back. Right, why were you thinking Lamar? Right? Were you thinking Lamar? Hurts. Do Hurts. I was gonna do uh, Josh Allen. No, uh, I'll throw some names. Do you want some names? Uh, Austin Eckler might not be bad because you don't know what Justin Herbert's gonna be. They might lean on him. Chubb. Uh, no, that's Can't Thursday night. Uh, let's go. We got something. Damien Harris. Mm, nah. Nah. Brees Hall. No. Nah. Ah. Uh. Man, yeah, maybe. I kind of uh, like. I kind of like Dalvin. We're really Cook. putting a lot of thought into it. Uh, James Robinson, final answer. Okay, against the Chargers. It's gonna be a juicy one. I feel. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Dave Montgomery and James Robinson. Josh Allen gets fifty yards. You owe me. Well, no. I no. the rules are. It's got to be running backs. It does not have to be yards. running backs. I don't think it has to be running backs. All right, backs. fine. Josh Allen's the pick. I think it just has to be rushing. Josh yards, Allen's yeah. the pick. All well, right. You sure you want to do that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Forgot to say for the Bears under. Even though right now it says it's really nice weather, there might be some lake weather coming off. Well, that's good for the bears. Yeah, it's unforeseen. Need some bear weather. Checked in with Canada. Okay, nice. Uh, let's Canada. before we get to Lovey Smith and talk about the Bears Texans and then Morton Anderson. Uh, let's do fantasy Russells, fantasy Russell Wilsons. Let's see how this goes, boys. <laughs> <laughs> let's ride. Hey, let's ride. Let's ride. Guys, let's stay let's positive, let's ride. fellas. Let's ride. Let's ride. Hello, gentlemen. Hey. My name's Barney Abernathy. Let's Barney. go. My stardom is stealing money from the government to pay for a volleyball court. Love that. No one's really going to care, and you'll still be in the Hall of Fame. It's Jail just for him. Great. It's like Robin Hood. Yeah. yeah. The complete reverse. If you're a legend, it doesn't matter. Robin the Hood. My sit -em. Is hooking up with co-workers. Oh, oh no. no. It's not it's not a good idea. It's always gonna end badly. Mm, and it's just it's just not something you want to do. No. Yeah. Take it take it from experience. Anyone settle down. Specific? One wife, one life. Mm. Find that hole and stick in it. Email. Don't don't shit where you eat. Uh my sleeper is Jerry Judy. Oh, oh. Jerster. It's uh Rosh Hashanah's coming up. Right? Sure. Rosh Hashanah's coming up. Happy New Year. Happy Here New Year. Happy, happy, happy. 5271, I think. Sure. Jerry Judy's going to have a big game. I'm going to get him the ball. Oh, okay. Let's okay. Go. Try to get him six points. Yeah. Like Star David. Yeah. Let's ride. My starting. What's your name, sir? Oh, hey, it's Russell Wilson. Oh. Yeah. oh. It's supposed to be. Let's ride. I had a fake name, too. Same. Uh, I'm Russell Wilson. And my starting is getting that extra hour of work in. Yeah. Uh -oh. It's finally fall. So set your clocks back this weekend. One hour, that means that you get an extra hour to be an extra hour greater than you were an hour ago. Nice. The autumnal equinox. Let's ride. Let's ride. I'm sitting my own head coach when he hears that he has an extra hour of clock management to screw it up. Oh. Sorry, Nathaniel. Nate. Pass. Nate dog. Get in the lab. That one. Pass. Run pass. 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 Run. <laughs> Ball. <laughs> My sleeper is Kirk Cousins. 
big bounce back week this week. Big nice. bounce back from funny guy from old Great Kirky. Guy. Yeah, great yeah. family man, I, Captain Kirk. I call yeah. him uh, Perk Cousins. He's nice. my sleeper. Nice. Ah, All right. Uh, what's up, guys? It's James Tinselberry. Hey, Jamie Tin. Call me Jimmy if you want. Titty Fox. Uh, my stardom is Jeff Bezos. Great guy, inspiring guy, someone I look up to personally. He might buy the Suns. Way to go. What an entrepreneur. Yeah. Business leader. I love it. He's he's changing lives and every day. And philanthropist. All right, my sit -em is money. Mm. So my good friend Gary V once told me, people are chasing cash, not happiness. When you chase money, you're going to lose. You're just going to. Even if you get the money, you aren't going to be happy. Now, I can say that because I just signed a $250 million contract, but just remember, guys, it's really cool when a rich person tells you don't chase the money. Just shoot your family. Yeah, shoot your family. Think about what that does to you. Okay, that sucked. All right, my sleeper is also, uh, or sorry, my sleeper is mirrors, and it's also a quote from my good friend Gary V. Mirrors, look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself what you want to be every day for the rest of your life. I want to be a quarterback that doesn't throw in the middle of the field. That's awesome. Cool. That's awesome. I, yeah. I respect that. You got that grind set. Yeah. Don't break let's, the mirror. Let's ride. Seven years bad luck. Also, I looked in the mirror once, and I was like, don't fuck Sierra before you get married to her or something. I think that was the story. I really like to look in the mirror at myself when I'm having sex with yeah. Sierra. Yeah. Premarital's no good. Cool. What's, all right, fam. What's got? What's good, guys? What's, what's good? good? It's, what's uh, good? It's him. Oh, yeah. Him. yeah, yeah it's yeah. him. Nice. My stardom. Jesus? Is, no, no. I mean, it's him. I'm him. Uh, so, my stardom is faith. 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 Love it. Got Love it. Faith. Not just Absolutely. a name at the strip club. My sit-em. Low effort, mm. Low high effort. effort. Yeah, Always need, need high effort. Yeah. Yep. Always need high Motor. effort. Effort, Pass. effort, effort. Yeah, Pat, run! Yeah, gotta keep it going. And my uh, sleeper is Jesus. Oh, oh, okay. Because he always loves you. Just yeah. for three days he slept. Though. Yeah. And woke right up. Exactly. Nice. Rise and grind. Nice. Always will give you forgiveness. Yeah. yeah. Coach's son. Especially when you have throw an interception on the one yard line in the Super Bowl. He's got a plan. Yep. He does have that plan. Great excuse for everything, too. Okay. Absolutely. All right. That was Fantasy Russell Wilson's. I don't know how that will go. I had we'll fun. That was fun. Plus um, Jules. I mean, that's yeah, really Jules, the, the yeah. bar yeah, for... Yeah, the, the, the barometer. Um, do, would, Hank, would you like to speak about your coach at all? Ime? Bill Bill... Oh. Uh, yeah. Ime <laughs> Udoka. Football season. He may, um, uh, he may want to keep it in his pants. Yeah. So he's uh, dipping his pen into... You may want to go to couples counseling. What 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 What's going on here, Hank? Uh, just a lot of rumors and scuttlebutt. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen anything official uh, from the team. <laughs> just Woj saying he's probably going to be suspended for a year. He may. It was an all-time Woj for bomb. a well. Big Cat also. I gave you wrong information. Yeah, I was like trying I was, to help. You. I was. I was kind of not. I wasn't. I wasn't locked in on the internet last night, and I got some text from Big Cat being like, "Don't worry about it." And so yeah, I was wrong. That was I didn't my know he mindset. fucked everyone in the Celtics organization. That Hank. was my mindset when I went. Out. I was like, "Oh, don't, don't worry about it." Woke up and it was like he's going to be suspended for a year. Yeah, he. Um, the Woj bomb was so funny because. Because it was someone tweeted it was so perfect. Woj was like, Ime Udoka is facing a suspension for infra team infractions. Team uh, guidelines. Team guidelines could be suspension could be coming in the next twenty four hours. And someone was like, I don't know if he missed a flight or killed someone. Yeah, we, Woj was that vague about it. So what happened was somebody somebody leaked the information to Woj that he was about to be suspended, but he didn't tell him why because that person wanted people to speculate why he was going to be suspended. There's right. no other reason to do it. So then Woj puts out this cryptic tweet, and the cryptic tweet was almost daring Shams to go ahead and find out what the real scoop was, which ended up happening. So Woj kind of got played like a fiddle on this one. Yeah, he did. Getting suspended, obviously you got to wait for for more details to come out. I don't know if they will, but there's there's just a lot of question marks with like the... You know, they're very, they're very upfront and forward saying it was a consensual... Yeah. You know relationship or whatever yeah but why would you get suspended for a year for that there's rumors that it was you know a, a member like a high-ranking member of the celtics wife and that guy is upset and that's why the suspension is so long which so, kind of makes sense because and also just the fact that it got leaked means to me possibly that it was someone in the celtics who was upset and just hates email and wanted to get yeah. it out there but like the it's Celtics. Just, the Celtics are, you know, they're a win at all costs organization. Like it, it, I, 
I don't know what the details could have been that's so bad that they have to spend him for a year. Do you think Brad Stevens found out about this Maybe Brad, this violation yeah, of guidelines and Brad Stevens was like, we got a pretty good team. I kind of want to coach again. Yeah. Let's just spend him for a year. I. This feels like more of a, uh, like, who he sleeps with, especially if it's two consenting adults, who cares? It's more of a judgment thing. Like, hey, don't do that if... The person is the other person's married. You're, I think he was in a relationship. Yeah, he's long. He's engaged. It's in like the sat next to her one of the games. All the all the yeah. like yeah. It, it, it's, it's the fucking me. organization. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you he could have fucked you, Hank. <laughs> yeah, big time. Yeah, he probably had eyes for you. Yeah, when you when you did that pump fake, he was like, "Wow, he's got great hands." It's a it's a crazy plot twist that like we all thought the horniest coach by far was Doc Rivers. Um, for yeah. liking like all that porn the other night, but it's Ime. Turn, yeah, we also had and, Rick Pitino as a coach. Yeah, well, that's yeah, true. Not, yeah, not in the NBA, but St- shout no, out Stav. Yeah, good. Yeah, no, no, I'm he saying coached yes. on the Celtics. Yeah, the Celtics. Yeah, but I'm saying right now he's not. Yeah, but I, um, I think that like you guys are you guys are right in that if it was between two consenting adults, right. The only way it's worth a year long suspension, there are two ways I think. One is if it's with somebody's wife that's in the franchise that's screwing up like the entire workplace dynamic. Two is if Ime is this person's boss. Yeah. And then that could be an issue too. If it's just somebody like in a different part of the organization entirely, I don't see a year suspension. And what's weird is like, why do you suspend him for a year instead of firing him? Because it seems it seems way more yeah. reasonable. Well, he's a good coach. Well, I know, but yeah. like a, a year-long suspension is a fucking long suspension. No, I know. It's weird that there's like some sort of middle ground where it's not fireable, but also he's away from the team for an entire calendar year. It's it's a crazy story. It's also fucked up. You know, obviously, again, it, it all signs point to this leaking from the Celtics coming out, but it's like it just fucks over the entire organization, and now everyone's speculating on who the woman was, and they're putting out oh, pictures yeah, that part of sucks. all the, that like, part every, sucks. every woman that works in the organization. Like, it's like... It's a shitty, shitty, shitty situation. Uh, shout out our good friend Stavros, though, because um, he, w- when he was on to do the NBA playoff preview, he was like, Eme fucks. And yeah. he was exactly right. I mean, he's a hot dude. I, yeah. He's a hot dude. Yeah, he's, our, a hot, he's a hot dude. And hot dudes tend to fuck. Are, are hot chicks out? What do you mean? Like, are they not cool anymore? Or is the moment of hot chicks over? Because it's it seems like it's a pandemic right now where it's like Eme's fiance, Nia, is that her name? Neil Long, yeah. Neil Long, uh, Emily Rajkowski mm-hmm. just got cheated on. Uh, Adam Levine, mm-hmm. that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Seems like hot women are having a tough go of it. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers to hot women. But hot dudes are having a moment. Yeah. E-may. City boys up. Yeah. City boys. City boys. Boys E-may. are buzzing. No, uh, this city boys down. Oh, city boys down? Yeah, you could spend it for a year. That's down. Yeah, that, that is that sound bad. That's for, a, for fucking. That's yeah. bad. That's yeah, that is bad. A pretty bad punishment too to have to. It was like a, ne- a damn. Have to go home and spend every <laughs> single day with your fiance that you just cheated on. Yeah, that's a tough. It's tough. That's a tough deal. Yeah. Um, okay, let's get to our interviews. Lovey Smith, Morton Anderson. Before we do that, PFT, you got a quick word from one of our sponsors. Yeah, our great friends over at Chevy. We love Chevy. I drove a Chevy this summer. It was an awesome truck. Absolutely loved driving it. Got us safe and sound out to Los Angeles all the way from the East Coast for the Super Bowl last year. And we know that every team starts the season undefeated. And for the first month, everyone has a shot. But one team has already won it all. That team is Chevy and its star player, the Silverado. The Silverado is the star of the Chevy. That's, that's, the, that's the guy. The Silverado is the guy of Chevy. According to J.D. Power, Chevy is the most awarded brand for new vehicle quality. And Chevy trucks have won more new vehicle quality awards than any other brand. That's some serious, serious hardware, but champions don't stop. They keep moving forward. That's what Silverado is all about. From the LT model to the most extreme Silverado ever, the ZR2, Chevy gave the Silverado a new interior with a larger infotainment screen and digital instrument cluster. They gave it towing technology and up to 14 available camera views. It's always truck season here at PMT, But now it's also tailgate season, and what better way to roll up to a tailgate than in a Chevy Silverado boasting a larger, more functional bed than any other competitor? You and your Silverado will own tailgate season in style. Silverado, the ultimate tailgate flex. Head over to Chevy.com to learn more about the Chevy Silverado. For J.D. Power 2022 U.S. award information, visit JDPower.com slash awards. Now, here's Lovey Smith. 
All right, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is Coach Houston Texans head coach Lovey Smith. Uh, thank you for joining us. the The first thing I want to get out of the way, just just to start, is that we are both members of Mills Mafia. Yes, uh, you know, Big Cat, I'm a, I'm a part of the Mills Mafia too. A uh, lot of lot of faith, of course, in Davis. Um, you know, we as a football team hadn't played our best ball yet, but really excited about what we're going to do in the future. And, yeah. and, and can I just say one thing, too, is that, like, don't say Davis is our quarterback just to, you know, trigger up old <laughs> memories. Just maybe just say I'm part of Mills Mafia. I, what old memories? I, You know, I have a hard time thinking of uh, about some of the things I've said in the past, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, when a guy is your quarterback, though, um, yeah, I don't want it to be anyone to wonder. You yeah. know, and, and that was easy. That was easy back then with Rex. I mean, Rex led us to a Super Bowl. Uh, and I'm excited about Davis, what Davis Mills is going to do for us here. Yeah, as a defensive coach, are you, when you're watching practice, like we root, we're in Mills Mafia for sure, but when you're watching practice, do you find yourself rooting more for the defense? Well, in training camp, uh, I would say so. You know, I, I call plays here defensively. So it's a little bit different relationship th through training camp. Once the regular season comes here, it's a little bit different then. Um, but I'm, and, and even in training camp, I mean, I never have a bad day. I mean, if defense gets burned and offense is doing well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really part of the offense then, loving that. So you can't go wrong either way. Yeah. You've coached, I mean, some incredible defenses, some incredible players. Do you have one player that sticks out to you that is just, you know, uh, they were just different? For whatever it may be, I mean, there's again, there's a long, long list of great players you've coached. Yes, and I, I'm not going to make that mistake. I made that mistake uh, before. Uh, of I was asked kind of similar question, and I started talking about a player at my my current stop. And right after I got through with the interview, I got a call from another Hall of Fame pay, player on the other end. Say, hey, Lovey, what's up with this? So, <laughs> I'll just say everywhere I've been, uh, I know y'all in Chicago, you know. You love a lot of things that's happened in Chicago. Uh, great memories. I've, uh, uh, you know, talked to a lot of the guys from the past this week, knowing that we're coming back in town. But learned so much from the, you know, the names that you know about in Chicago. Seemed like every stop along the way, there's a, a player that has influenced me some kind of way, whether it be through a, a Hall of Fame type career or just, you know, coming into work with your lines paled each day. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm not a Chicago guy. I'm about to be a Chicago guy in a matter of months here. You're going back to Chicago. Can you tell me, like, where are you? Do you have any place that you're looking forward to, to visiting when you're going back into town? Like, if I'm looking at one restaurant, if I got one meal in Chicago to eat, where am I going? Uh, again, I try to stay away from those, too. Just keep in mind, uh, we, um, my wife is from Chicago, so we, we maintain a, a condo in Chicago throughout. So I spend time there you know, a little bit of time in all season every year. And you just talk food. There are so many great places downtown, you know, uh, to eat. Joe's, Gibson's, uh, Carmine's, you know, it's, it's a lot about what, what food do you like? What food are you looking for? So many things to do uh, in the summertime, in the fall, just stay away from there in the winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, w you know, after you, you left the Bears and you went to Tampa, then Illinois, now Houston, has there been any moments where you've looked back and you've kind of maybe chuckled a little? Like, wow, things haven't really gone well for the Bears since I left. Oh, no. I, you, you know, I can't say that's the case. Um, you know, when I, I left can. the Bears. I can. I can say that. I can say the case. I, I can absolutely you know, say that's the case. You know, I had a disagreement on on uh, where our program was when, when I was removed from my job there with the Bears. I'll acknowledge, acknowledge that. You know, most of the time you, uh, you lead a team to 10 wins, you don't get fired. But uh, life happens that way. Seemed like to me in my career, every time seemed like it was a setback. It's really been a setup, something bigger and better. And um, I'm a guy from Texas. I uh, played high school football, product of Texas high school football. So every stop or every job that I had that didn't, it didn't end well, it led me to, as I see it, my, you know, the perfect job for me of coaching the Houston Texans. So I want to, you brought up high school football, Texas high school football. I remember hearing a story about your team in Texas high school football. And I, because it's been a few years since I was told the story, I was like, oh yeah, didn't they have like some dominant defense or something? I went and looked it up. 
1975, <laughs> Lovey Smith played for Big Sandy High School. They won the Texas State Championship. They gave up 15 points in the entire season. I don't even know. I still don't understand how that's possible. How is that possible? Well, it was, you know, you sometimes you're just at the perfect place at the perfect time. And uh, that that team was a special team. You know, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, we scored 820 points in a 14-game season. That was pretty special. But you play 14 games and you get 11 shutouts. That's hard to do. Uh, just a, uh, just glad that I was a part of it. So uh, that's what, when you come from that environment, you know, you expect to, you know, win a lot of football games, and uh, hopefully that's what we we'll end up doing here. So that's you crazy. give up, you give up seven points a game, uh, you know, a couple times over over the course of that season. Are were you mad at yourself after the game? Did you like have to chew out your teammates? Well, I, I remember that well too. We uh, two of the we gave up two touchdowns, and both times our cornerback fell down. That's kind of rest of the story too. <laughs> we gave up a safety uh, in the state championship game. So, again, those things don't happen very often, a uh, special group. In that group, so picture 18 guys being on the team or so, and one of the guys on the football team was David Overstreet to end up being the 13th player in the NFL draft, played for the Miami Dolphins. So, uh, lightning hit at, at the perfect time there. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's two incredible. touchdowns in 14 games. Again, I remember hearing about it, and then when I looked it up, I was like, wait, 15 points? In an entire season, do you guys get on the on the phone or, or like have meetups every now and then and just laugh well, about? Because that had yeah. to be the most fun team to ever play for. Yeah, still, you know, uh, a lot of your your high school uh, friends, buddies, or lifetime buddies for you, and that's the case for me. Some of us do. Uh, I know every time we get together, the conversation normally leads, you know, some kind of way back to the good old days. That's what you do, mm. you know, when you get a little bit older and uh, and rightfully so. You pop champagne every time a, a, a high school football team in Texas allows their third touchdown <laughs> yeah, right. of the year, knowing that your record will never be broken. That's, that's honestly yeah. an incredible stat. Uh, I, I've been an admirer of your defenses that you've coached and that you've drawn up for a while. I personally think that the Tampa 2 defense is on its way back. It's like it's it's making a little bit of a comeback here. And uh, when you had a you had a, a significant part in creating that defense, do you, do you think that um, I guess what's one word that you would use to describe the Tampa two defense when it's played perfectly? When it's played, uh, you know, one word would be hard to say. I just think first off, just cover two in general. Like nowadays, you know, what do defenses play? You can play man. Most people, all people, play some form of man some form of three deep, some form of cover four quarters. But the corners are by there just one-on-one -on -one with a receiver outside. The wide receivers are getting paid a lot of money. I think you have to have a defense to give them a little bit of relief. So that's why cover two, yeah, I think every game I've coached, I think cover two has been a base part of our game plan going in. And when you say it's making a comeback, uh, there is a place for it. And there's certain situations. You know, most people assume we play cover, you know, you have 50 plays, 49 other plays, we're playing cover two. That's not the case. You, you have to, you know, have do it all. But uh, there are moments when you want the corner to just be – to really be able to double team a guy, you have to be able to play cover two. Yeah. So, hypothetical, you um, – whether it be cover two or any other defense, let's just say I gave you a team and 10 of the guys on defense were average, just league average – and you got to pick one position that was elite, what would your position be? Well, i say it would be uh, a defensive lineman. And then I would say, okay, uh, who is a, the, the closest defender to the quarterback? And so I would say three technique. And we've had, you know, I've had the privilege of being around a special Hall of Fame three technique uh, in Warren Sapp. So – it would be that the next position you say, okay, now one, you know, one B is still about the front defensive lineman, a defensive end. And as we've been putting our defense together, you just look right down the middle of the field. Then I think you need one special linebacker. I've been a part, I've been around a few of those and safety wise, uh, our defensive, you know, our defenses have a hall of famer. I think in at just about every position, but you first take care of the middle of your uh, middle of the field. So that's three technique, a linebacker, and a safety. 
Okay, I, really I like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. You, you have you have coached some outstanding players over the course of your career. I was actually looking back at some of the players that you've coached, and uh, I remembered about London Fletcher. London Fletcher, the linebacker in St. Louis. I think he's one of the most underrated players, uh, at least in the last 30 years of the NFL. Yes. And I was looking at, at his dimensions, and I'd like for you to explain to me like how, how it's physically possible for a man who's 5'9", weighs 240 pounds, to run a 4440. Well, I, that goes that tells you exactly what's important I think about a linebacker. London Fletcher was more like a 45 guy. So he could run as well as the running backs could. And when you're 5 when you're 59 510, you're compact, you're going to be down low. You're going to be able to get down underneath defenders, uh, or offensive players, linemen, pads. And then London, he was one of the smartest guys uh, that you'll be around. So the most o- the most overrated thing I think there is about just a, a player in general is size and especially height. So London had all of the things that you you really need. And if you look at his career, yes, I mean never missed a game and could do everything you're asking, you know, a defensive player linebacker to do. Uh, this might be a dumb question, but in the coaching, uh, in, in like the meeting room before games, and you're going over the game plan, when the Bears were were rolling with you and you, your defense was out of this world and the offense was the offense, to quote you, Rex is our quarterback, the offense was the offense, would you guys sit there and be like, all right, well, we can get at least one from Devin. Like, he, we're good. Like, did you pencil it into the game plan? Like, Devin Hester will get loose once and we'll have at least six points out of this. Well, I think a lot of you hear, uh, you get to coach talk, you know, um, it, they say, Hey, it takes all three phases, offense, defense, special team. I believe that. Yeah. And when you've had a, an opportunity to see just about every, uh, every touchdown that Devin Hester scored and you see that that has happened where offense, defense, not really working, but what you, you know, Devin Hester scores two times on, uh, you know, with special teams, that's definitely the case. But for me, yes, a part of it is, hey guys, you talk to these groups. Special teams, you got to have, we got to need at least one big make a difference play. Mm-hmm. And from there, defensively, you know, a lot of people like right now say, okay, who's the best defense uh, in football? They say, well, total yards. Th- that's one of the the, the least important uh, statistic you should be looking at. It's first off scoring, and first defensively. It's not a good game. Our goal is to take the ball away three times. If you're plus three in a turnover ratio, you have a chance to win. So scoring, third down, red zone, defense. Right now, on the one one of the things we've done well around here, once the team gets down there, you got to force them to, to kick field goals instead of touchdown. So uh, I talked about things like that and how to play complementary football uh, offensively. Part of that turnover ratio is not turning the ball over. Right, yeah. and and you had a quarterback, uh, like we've said, Rex Grossman, RG3, the original uh, RG3, Rex Grossman the third. He was not afraid to take shots. He took a lot of shots. He, Some would say he loved taking shots. Um, as a coach, how do you balance like I, the fact that you want your quarterback to be able to make plays uh, with the fact, like, like you said, if you lose the turnover battle, you put yourself in a pretty tough position where you're going to be relying on your defense to score or relying on your special teams to score. Would you have any like push and pull with Rex after games where he just went out there and went full Rex on you? Well, I can't remember a lot of those times. I just know on how we look at our quarterback position now. Uh, yes, we want to take shots with our quarterback. Uh, by having a good running game, that opens up lanes to be able to take a shot, to stop the run. Most times wide receivers are going to be in a one-on-one situation. So there is a place for that quarterback that wants to sling the ball. But to me, on whether a quarterback is a good quarterback or not, it's about, you know, decision. It's decision-making each play and knowing when to pull the trigger, when not to. Sometimes you just live to see another day. And you have to, you know, put the team a little bit before, you know, maybe some just individual stats. Just just how big is Davis Mills' neck? Like in person? Is it <laughs> – is it crazy? Uh, well, I know Davis is a big man in general. You know, and that's – in an ideal world, you want a quarterback to kind of look over, kind of scan the – you know, scan the field. That's, that's a – you know, that has a Stanford degree. That's saying an awful lot, too. Uh, 
again, he, he's got a bright future ahead of him. We got to do some other things to help him, but uh, excited about the direction we're headed. With yeah. Him. Do you have a Do you have a beard bet that's lined up? Have you used that as a mo- motivational tool to say like, hey, if we if we get to the playoffs, we're shaving it? No, I'm not much for those kind of things. I just expect you know guys go out every day, grind, coming with your lunch pail, and uh, not a superstitious guy at all either. So. Beard wise, it just kind of makes sense, you know. After a while, guys that shave every day, you know, you kind of get tired of that. And I went on vacation about a few a uh, few years back, and you grow it out. And I said, you know what? I think I'm gonna keep it this time. And you know, I've been married. It'll be what 40, 42 years this uh, this coming November. My wife loved it, so it's easy to go that direction. It looks I see great. I'll follow suit to it. I yeah, it looks great. I hope you keep it. But um, you mentioned your running game that you got this year. I'm a big fan of Damian Pierce. I like what I've seen. from. I watched him in the preseason a couple of times. I don't know what it is about him, but I'm drawn to him, and I watch him play, and I'm like, I think this kid could play. Um, are you planning on getting him a little bit more involved? I know that he, he started using him more week two than he did week one. Am, am I yeah. going to look like a genius for telling people that this kid passes my eyeball test? Well, yeah, I think you are. I think you, it's safe to go down that road. Um, and the reason why you like him is that, I mean, it's not a whole lot to dislike. I mean, he can catch the ball, but you just talk about tough, hard-nosed football uh, player that can – he can make – you miss an open field. He can cut on a dime. He can run with power in between the tackles. He loves contact. You just look at – you're right, from week one to week two, improvement. And that's what you see from young football players. But in time, I, I think, yes, he, he got what – what I've seen. I've seen a couple – been around a couple of good running backs uh, – and we saw it early in training camp, and it seemed like he confirmed that that notion that we had each day we go on the field with. Have you uh, have you checked in on your uh, the ten year old that you recruited at Illinois? Do you remember that story? He's fifteen now, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep talking, keep talking to him. I, you know, I'm getting a little old. I forget a lot of things now. You know, you offered a scholarship you know, so, to a ten year old. Yeah, that's what came out a little bit. As far as really offering a scholarship, a scholarship, you know, I per se did not. We we kind of talked again to him a little bit. You know, you talk to a lot of guys, and sometimes it's casual conversation, and it all of a sudden becomes uh, written in ink. But, yeah. You know, and, and, I don't know much about where he is now. Yeah, people like to run with those stories. Um, so, Coach, this has been awesome. I have one last question. It's the rowback question. Use promo code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. Q-Zips, hoodies, polos, uh, promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase. So, like I said, back in Chicago this weekend, I'm rooting against you. Uh, I do like you, but I'm rooting against you. What is your – if you had, like, one memory, highlight, low light of your time in Chicago, what would it be? Oh, highlight is easy. Uh, The NFC Championship game. Against the Saints, Uh, yeah. Against the Saints uh, to be able to, you know, be the one seed, play the – Play the game there at Soldier Field, and right after the game, snow started coming down. Um, to be able, you know, uh, uh, Miss, you know, Miss McCaskey to be presented with the George Hallis Trophy. Family there in town, just a great memory for a lot of us. That would be the highlight, of course. And there were a lot more, if I, you know, games, you know, that the team played. Uh, they showed up each week for me. Yeah, for uh, for us. And as far as a, uh, you know, a negative time, oh, that would, you know, I can't think of much on the football field that I remember. But I'll uh, give you one. Probably, probably. How, how about the last day? <laughs> how about the last day I was in the office? How about that? Okay, I'll well, say that. well, everyone will think it's the NFC Championship game against the Packers. How about this one? We'll, we'll, we'll you know, keep it light. But um, 2004 Thanksgiving Day Bears Cowboys, maybe the worst football game yes. ever played. That, that's uh well, well there's a few things rw mccorders probably wouldn't say that that he ran an interception <laughs> back for a touchdown right yes yes uh that was uh that wasn't one of our best game but you know how that goes there's a couple that i would i could choose from down <laughs> but glass being half full i mean i i watched those out of the memory yeah pretty quick that's good you got any other questions pft uh just can you talk about how awesome the second half against the arizona cardinals game was <laughs> That's a highlight where, for sure. Where you just that I've never seen a crazier switch in a game at halftime than that. I don't think I ever will. Yeah. If you uh, if you ask me for my number two uh, favorite game, it would be that on um, just what can happen. Yeah, you know you're down and seem like you're out of it. Seem like in NFL this this year, that's every game is like that. You mm-hmm. know, teams come in on the 
you know, uh, big deficits. But it uh, seemed like everything was against us uh, that night. And we had some special men in the locker room. But at the half, though, I really did. I thought we would come back. If you just listen to, you know, Olin Krutz and the guys that were, they weren't talking like the game was, was over. They were talking like, can't, can't we get out there in the second half and uh, to take the ball away? You know, we took the ball away that year like no one has before. And uh, to win it that way, you know, it wasn't a whole lot of offense that night, but uh, Hess is scoring a touchdown and, and to be able to get two defensive touchdowns also. There's a lot of ways to win football games, that's for sure. I yeah. like it. Well, Coach, uh, like I said, best of luck the rest of the season. I can't wish you luck Appreciate this weekend. You but, um, yeah, we, we're, we're fans of you, so uh, best of luck the rest of the way. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. More athletes are speaking out about the importance of mental health, but you don't have to be a pro to want to be at the top of your game. Everyone needs to take care of their mental well-being, whether you're an athlete or not. Therapy is the best way to stay in peak mental shape. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great, great option. It's convenient. It's accessible. It's affordable. It's entirely online. You can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey. You can switch therapists at any time. And when you're ready to feel at the top of your mental health game, therapy can help get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash PMT today. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash PMT. And now, here's Morton Anderson. Okay, we now welcome on our good friend, recurring guest, Hall of Famer, Morton mm. Anderson, one of the best voices. <laughs> it's a fact. Hi. The Great Dane, Hello. one of the best voices on this podcast. Um, how, first of all, welcome. You almost got, thank you. And and second, I heard you were you had a meeting at the league offices. Are you getting piss tested again? What's going on? <laughs> yes, they forgot. They forgot to get me back in '83. So <laughs> they ran a. There was an audit. <laughs> and they're like, oh, that shit. That was a piss audit. He's got a yeah. backlog of piss. Yeah. <laughs> Once in a while, you know, like you, some people like to go back and listen to old albums that they have stored back in their, yeah. their back rooms. Roger Goodell has vials of piss. From There's nothing player. like a good yeah. piss story to get it going here. Yeah. Guys. Yeah, sweet. What are you doing in the league offices? Are you are you part of the competition uh, committee? I had a meeting on, on behalf of uh, somebody I'm a brand ambassador for in the betting space, and we're just trying to uh, navigate through – through that with the NFL and see if there's a spot for us there. Oh, nice. Uh, better collective. I think I can say that. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. say it. We'll bleep it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You got your own. Yeah, you, you yeah, got yeah. Your own. it's fine. Um, was was well, Roger there? Did you see Roger? I texted him. He said he was in and out of meetings. I said, well, you got to at least stick your head in, and that did not happen. So. Oh, no. I mean, that's that's disrespectful on Roger Goodell's part. You're a Hall of Famer. I thought so, but, you know, I, there was no sign, no greeting sign. Yeah. Does he text you back? Do you, yeah, you guys have a good me relationship? Back. He did, uh, well, it, good enough that he texted me back, which was nice, I thought. That counts as something. Um, is he right away. Is yeah. he an emoji guy, or has he? No. What, was he sent just straight no, to the point? He's not an emoji. I'm not even uh, an emoji. What, what's an emoji? Yeah, it's yeah, like the smiley yeah. faces, the all pictures, that stuff. Yeah. The picture stuff. You, uh, I, I actually um, was watching a highlight of one of your games uh, when we did our show on Sunday. Was it uh, real to real? No. Yeah. <laughs> listen, it was crazy. I want your perspective of it because we were talking about the Browns losing to the Jets. Oh, and the no famous Dwayne Rudd game. You yes. were the kicker yes, who won the, the game for the Chiefs. So that from your, was wild. Yeah, from your perspective. The wildest we, game I've ever been a part of. Well, yeah, walk us through it. Again, if you, Long, if you didn't listen Sunday, you can you can explain what happened. Yeah, a hot game in Cleveland, high scoring. Uh, we're down by two points. It's like 38 to 36 or something crazy. Uh, we got a high-powered offense. We're in Cleveland. It's like August, September, one of the first games, first game of the year. Yeah. My first game as a chief. And Trent Green goes back and in the last desperation attempt to advance the ball and get us anything. You know, we, we, need, a t we need a field goal, but we're running out of time. So this was the last play of the game. Not. Not. One more to yeah. come. Yeah. And he gets kind of half sacked, and as he's going down, he kind of shuttle passes it to Tate, an offensive lineman, eligible, good enough. He starts scampering around the left sideline. Rudd, who got a hold of Trent's uh, leg, thinks the game's over, throws his helmet, and of course we all know that the game can't end on a defensive penalty. He gets a 15-yard unsportsmanlike tacked onto Tate's beautiful run right which is a uh, piece of work by itself if you've watched yeah. that thing and uh, 
here I am with zero 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 on the clock, um, kicking a thirty-five yard field goal from the left hash. Welcome to Kansas City, man. It was wild. And so you come in the locker room after you're like, "How the hell did we win that game? How did we win it? On time play. I've never been part. You know, played three hundred eighty-two games. I have never been a, a part of a game where you win the game with no time on the clock. I, Nuts. I wonder if we did. Um, I'm sure you got some great researchers. How many times that has happened? I'm gonna see on time down. Right I remember there was a kick. I think it was Nick Novak made a kick. Against the Dallas Cowboys, in he wore 2000. a glove. He wore like the the glove. He did, yeah. And remember it was him? Like 2006, 2007. Um, Sean Taylor returned a blocked field goal, and then there was a uh, a face mask on the return mm -hmm. that tacked on 15 extra seconds to his return. Nick Novak stepped up and kicked like a 49 yarder to win the game. I remember that one, but yeah, yeah, this is the only other one that I can remember. Were you were you ready to come on the field for that? Did you know that that was a possibility? Like, or did you think to yourself, I was trying "This to plays over, the game's over." Well, I, I was watching Trent, and then I said, "Okay," and then when I saw the helmet throw, I go, "We got it. We're getting another play." And I remember standing next to Dick Vermeil, Coach Vermeil. And he's like screaming, field goal, field goal. Was he I go, yeah, well, we got to wait for the, the whole thing to shake out. And then we got field goal. Of course we do. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, you're not going to take a knee, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did he cry after that one? Uh, you know, there was some emotion on all levels. I think, I, I'm, you know, he's very good at that. He's you know, a he, big crier. He, yeah, he does. He, I was real proud of him at, at the Hall of Fame. He did a nice job in the speech, did not cry. Oh, that's, wow. that's surprising very to me impressive. He, he yeah. was yeah. impressive, man. Waterworks. He's got. And it, I know. Like, yeah, I like a guy that can cry about about his his guys. You know. I know. I'm I'm crying a little bit inside right now because you know recurring guest T-shirts are is a thing here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it's, it's not, not there yet. Yeah, it's it's a on joke. its way. Oh, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we. My out. son is like, oh, you got to ask him about the recurring T-shirt, yeah, the recurring guest T-shirt. We have like two that we ever so, made, and uh, uh, I think Spencer uh, yeah. Hawes has one, and, and Rachel uh, Nichols uh, has maybe the Blake other. Griffin. All right, never mind. Just um, we'll get you one. No, this is what we say. We say we, we get you one, and then Pink. you walk out the door, and we're like, yeah, we got another. Yeah, got thinks, another one. He thinks he's having a shirt. <laughs> so it's an urban house. legend. It's a complete urban legend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yep. well, one day. Shame on my son. I mean, he was the one that said, oh, no, I mean, if you, can get, if you can get your hands on one, it's probably worth a, a, oh, a, a decent collect, amount of money eyes. because yeah. there have only been two mm -hmm. ever made before. So you have to steal it. If you see Rachel Nichols in public and she's wearing it, steal it from her. So take a look at this. Oh, shit. Oh. So, what happened? Uh, I got ejected from a golf cart. Whoa. Um, and you got to show that again for the camera. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at this road rash. So I was thinking about some non fungible. Uh, Doing uh, an NFT of your scab? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great scab to pick, isn't yeah. it? There's nothing better than that. Because it's pretty gnarly good, right here. I mean, this thing, I I wanna, it's, it's itching now, and I got this scar cream. I'm going to start. This is gross. Yeah, I had no, one no, of those. No. I had basically the exact this is same my plant one. leg, too. Yeah. <laughs> I had that exact same one uh, playing softball. I went for a foul ball and slipped on the on the concrete, after, like, in yeah. foul territory. Oh, this bad. And I had it for, like, a year, and it was the best scab to pick. I did, oh. ro I did road to grass, and then I laid there, and I was like... I I didn't hit my head. What a miracle. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. how, how'd you get ejected from a golf cart? <laughs> Raining, you know, bad visibility, an overcorrection left, and an ejection to the right. Were so you, you, were driving? Driving? you were driving? No, no, I was a passenger. Oh, so you can blame the guy. Yeah, he's going to remain nameless because I love him. Okay. But. So we're not, but. What you is know, his name? Mm -hmm. his family no, member? I'm not going to say. <laughs> it doesn't Jerry matter. Rice. He's, <laughs> nah, he's, he's a good friend and neighbor and. Man, we're we're both responsible for that one, you know. Yeah, not have been mm -hmm. some libations involved. Yeah, I would imagine so. Um, you you but mentioned anyway. you mentioned Dick Vermeil in the Hall of Fame. Do you go to Canton every year? I do. So how like is there ever a moment that you guys all have Hall of Famers like to yourself where there's not fans Friday. around? Friday, and you guys, what are those conversations? The Merlots, like? the luncheon. It's, yeah, it's really good. It's just everyone? everything. Anything goes in there. That's awesome. Uh, and you, of course, we can't talk about it. Right, but who's right, the best storyteller? Cool. <laughs> who's the best storyteller in that room? Uh, there's there's a bunch of guys that are really good. Uh, Joe DeLamalore is a really good storyteller. I told the story of my nickname, the Matador, because they kind of celebrate. Like if you made it for five years and ten years and fifteen and twenty and twenty five, you get to speak. But in all the other years, you don't get to speak. So the newbies, they don't get to speak. Right. They just listen. And they're not even, they're, that's Friday lunch. They don't have the gold jacket. They're sitting in their polos 
surrounded by 140 gold jackets, which is kind of wild. That's yeah. incredible. Then there's a moderator. That's um, Willie Lanier from the Chiefs. And then because it was my fifth year of being in, I got in in 17. We're in 22, five. I got to say a few words, and I talked about my story being the matador. And everybody goes, what? And it's... It, it's pretty simple. It was it, it was with the Falcons. We're playing Dallas. A kickoff comes to me in, in an act of self-preservation. I do the ole. Mm -hmm. You know, the matador it becomes my nickname. Dan Reeves is pissed at me Monday at the meeting. He flips the light on, and I said the only thing I should not have said to him, you don't pay me to do that. Oh. <laughs> so I had to go to his office. He goes, wink, wink, nod, nod. I have to treat you the same way. Yep. And from now on, you're the matador. And that's the story mm -hmm. I told at the luncheon. And and uh, everybody laughed. And that was it. I man. think that's a fair That was point, my contribution though. to yeah. the Merlin Olsen luncheon. Yeah. yeah so, so who holds court there? Who's the guy that? So that is Willie Lanier the is the one kind of spraying the wisdom. And then you got some older guys, uh, usually Michael Irvin, Chris Carter, they'll get up and say, because they're used to speaking in front of cameras yeah. and mics and so forth. Um, That's an incredible But it's thought. a nice, it's, yeah. a, it's a heavy room, guys. It's like, this year I said, you know, you're sitting next to Troy Aikman, and then, oh, there's uh, Dan Fouts, and there's, you know, oh, oh, there's the big, the, the original gangster, you know, the running back from, from Cleveland, hello. Um, Jim Brown. Jim Brown. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I can't even, uh, Sir, Sir Brown, Mr. Brown. <laughs> um, so there's, it's a heavy room. It's guys that I, you know, that play before me, some some that you guys you guys all know their names. I mean, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty heavy room. It's you, good. You good think fun. Uh, you think Justin Tucker's going to be there one day? I do. If he continues on this path, he'll be the greatest ever. I hate to say that because I was pretty good, but yeah, you were all right. You gotta, you know. Are you are you are you shocked by like the distance that's now going down yeah, in the you NFL? Know, we're gonna see. I think I might have said this on this show one time. We're gonna see a seventy yard field goal. Yeah. yeah. It I, feels say, like I think that. I, I feel like I said that two or three years ago. I, I think most kickers can make a seventy-yard field goal if they're on an NFL roster. There's a handful easily that can. My longest was seventy-six at Michigan State with a with wind behind me. Uh huh. But live in the game, like the sixty-six he made in Detroit last year, hits the crossbar, doinks over. But I've seen a couple of guys miss kicks that were shorter that or hit hit. Let's say a fifty-eight yarder. The guy. Um, from Carolina last week that hit the 58-yarder, um, bombed it. Like, it was deep in the net, I'm thinking. And you know how they have the check now, the track man check yeah, now, yeah. says, hey, good from, yeah. they said good from 68. We're going to see good from 72, good from, you know. I want to see it. I, I, mean, I want to see it, too. It's yeah. Like a walk-off would be badass, right? Yep. And just the, uh, the whole... The whole vibe about the kicker has changed, you know, uh, PFT. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you need to take the advantage of that, too. I know kickers are having a moment right now, except, cool. except week one. Yeah, it's it's tragic of magic. That's yeah, the well, problem. That, well, that's that was it. my theory is that the kickers, like whenever we have a crazy week in the NFL, a crazy Sunday, you if you're like, wow, what a wild Sunday, you usually can figure it out by how many kicks were missed. Because if there's missed kicks, made kicks, late in games, wild turns, yeah. that adds to the chaos. So week one NFL Sunday was incredible Sunday. So many games coming down to the wire, and I looked it up. It was 10 missed kicks or extra points in the fourth quarter or later. It's wow. like, there it is. The kickers basically decide how fun the NFL is I, by I like sucking. It. At times. We're, we're the fun factor. <laughs> yeah, right. We're not. Yeah, right. we're. And, you know, it, I mean, the 50 yarder was a big deal back in the 80s when I was playing, 80s and 90s. And uh, that was a big deal when you made a 50 yard field goal. That was like, wow, the magic line. And then now the 60 yarder is like the new 50. Yeah. And the, the 70 yard is going to be like the new 60. Yeah, I mean, I, but but they're still missing extra points. And I can't I can't wrap my head around it. So what what is it about that's thirty three kickers? yards? Because yeah. kickers are they're they're so weird. I I feel like you were a little bit different. Um, you had Thanks. I appreciate that. You had, you had a different mentality, right? Like your team respected you as being not just a kicker. You were part of the team, um, mm -hmm. but a lot of kickers they're head cases. They get yeah. real weird with it, and so yeah. they miss one kick, and all of a sudden it's just their their brain just crumbles into dust. 
What is that? How 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 can we help kickers if we're putting them if we're putting the entire profession of kickers? They're letting one kick define their ability as a kicker instead of understanding that um, it's a marathon and that you know you look at your body of work over twenty five years and I'm at eighty percent. So if you're a general manager of a football team or a head coach, you say if I can get eighty percent completion rate over twenty five years, I, I think that's consistency. That's a guy that I can hang my hat on. And I know 80%, you know, is not, like, I think Justin Tucker is kicking around 90, like, for his career, 92%. Yeah, yeah, something crazy It's like an that. insane number. But back when Jan Stenerud was kicking, he was 72% for his career. So everything gets better. You have the, the advent, you have the, the prolific long snappers now, and that's all they do is snap the ball. We didn't have that. I had a greasy offensive lineman with gloves on mm -hmm. who just got done with a 12-play uh, drive, and now he's got to put a different hat on and snap the ball. Again. Yeah. Come it's, on. It's a, it's a, it's a different difference. deal. You know, it's a big and difference. And you don't have him in practice. Right. These yeah. guys are attached to at the hip in practice. Come here, little snapper, you know, over here now, and, and you got him. Well, I don't think we talk about that enough, how the kicking game obviously has improved so much. But the specialist of having the long snapper, these guys, when they snap it, they've got it down to such a science yeah. that when it hits the holder's hand, laces the, are twelve o'clock. The yep. laces are already set up. They know like how much spin to put on the ball, and they can do it properly every single Turn. time. That, never spins bad word. Spins a bad word. Yeah, Turn. because spinning indicates a a quick centrifugal motion. We don't want that, man. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to hit. You ever hit a ball that's moving like spinning on its axis? Right. It's going to spin right off your foot. You turn so it. So turn. You want to you want to tell your holder, "Hey, man, if you got to turn it, turn it." But hopefully, uh, you know, that long snapper knows exactly how many rotations to get the laces at 12. Yep. But if they're at 9 or 3 and I'm coming uh, snap to kick 1.2 seconds, 115, which I was, just leave them. Yeah. So don't I don't mess with them. A moving ball is the worst thing to hit as a kicker. Just yeah. leave it. Yeah. Even if the laces are pointed at me, I can still compress the football through that. Yeah, I, I got into an argument online. Um, I think it was in the playoffs last year about how the laces being pointed in. If it, you know, everyone says like point the laces out, and ideally you'd like the laces to be pointed out. Of course, but they're pointed in. A good kicker should be able to still make that field goal. It's well, if they're on the side or if the ball is leaning to a side that you don't like it leaning to. You don't want to lean it like. If it lean, if it leans like if I'm left footed, you like it leaning left just a little bit, but never to, like towards you, and you kick because now you're gonna hit the side panel. Yeah, you're gonna get a yeah a shit kick to the you know to the right or for a right footer to the left. So anyway, you want to have that nice vertical ball flight, wind piercing ball flight. You know, nice rotation vertically, right down the middle. When you and we aim for the middle. Why PFT? Because the middle never changes. Exactly. And uh, one of the things that you taught me when, when we were getting ready for the XFL tryouts a couple years ago, um, like your mentality was just your body is like a homing pigeon to the middle of the uprights. Right. You, like when, whenever you step on the field, you like to be always walking towards the center of the uprights yeah, because you're just like channeling middle. your entire energy. Yeah, the parameter. At that direction. The parameter is never going to change. It's going to be, you know, your 18 feet inch, six inches. So we don't care about that. We just care about a point through which and to which we're going to kick. Yep. What when you would miss a kick? What does the what does the sideline say? Does anyone ever say anything to you, or is it just like because that's I I love that interchange where it's like yeah, kicker misses a kick, goes to the sideline. Maybe you see the punter being like, hey, nice try. But yeah, would, a little would, pat on the yeah, ass, would, and, uh, you know, next time. Would anyone um, like a quarterback come up to you or something or anyone say anything no, to you? No, not really, but I did have one instance in Jacksonville in 96, and this was what put Jacksonville in the playoffs with Brunel and those guys. And um, we were down by two points. I had a 30-yarder in the rain, in the mud. As I planted, my plant foot kind of moved up ahead of the ball, and I kind of slipped and I, sh I shanked it left. We lost the game. We were like 3-13. and 13. We weren't going anywhere anyway. And I'm laying there on my, my, my back, and uh, Robbie Tobek was one of the offensive linemen. He straddles me, and I'm thinking, what a nice teammate. He's going to help me out. And he goes, you lost the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> so that situation was distasteful. <laughs> and then he stepped over me and left me there. Oh, my God. And it was the last game of the season, so I had to wait the whole offseason to 
to make one. You know, that was really yeah. bad. Oh, that's brutal to have the season end on a miss. Oh, it was bad. That's really and tough. And it got Jacksonville. But here's the here's the rest of the story. So it gets Jacksonville in, in the playoffs for the first time in franchise history. I get a call in March if I would come to Jacksonville and present Mark Brunel with the Sportsman of the Year Award as a surprise guest. It's a big black tie shindig deal. I said, absolutely. Uh, they said, we'll set you up at Sawgrass, at Marriott. You know, we'll give you a little scratch to come down. I said, I'm turning this shitty experience into something, you know, profitable. Yeah. This is America. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I go to Jacksonville. I'm the surprise. I'm the last presenter. Nobody knows I'm there. I walk out and I, I fake slip, you know, just like, <laughs> from my, and I get a standing ovation for like 2,000 people in black ties. <laughs> It was freaking awesome. Mark Brunel's laughing. And then I went and played golf at uh, Sawgrass for like three rounds and hung out at the Marriott. It was awesome. That's, That's hilarious. That's incredible. Yeah. Right? But, but it, so, you you know, you, you turn a shitty thing into something fun and profitable. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. So you kicked forever in, uh, in New Orleans. You're mm -hmm. a New Orleans legend. You were once ranked, what was it, like the top three bachelor in New Orleans, which is... <laughs> Number one, but I, it, who's, you know. I also read a story that people would call, like girls were calling the Saints... Just like leaving messages, being like, "Hey, if Morton's around, can you give me a call?" Were you <laughs> actually getting that. messages from from the New Orleans Saints? Well, this was back when there was answering machines and landlines. There was no there, were, there was no World Wide Web. There was no mobile phones, so it was like meet me at the bell tower at noon. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it was very like the OK Corral thing. It was like the old West. You know, the wild, wild West. Did you ever do that? Uh, what? Like, just like show the, up like somewhere random? Like the Saints were like, hey, uh, this girl just called. She said, meet me down by the trolley. You know what to do. <laughs> meet me down by, on the neutral ground. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, yeah, you know what? Today feels like a good day to try that out. <laughs> Let's make a bad decision. I, I made bad decisions back in the in the early 80s. I certainly did. Um, but for some reason, my, my outfits always got me through. I had parachute pants. Uh, I had the boots. I had the headband. Had a little eyeliner going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you Google oh, that, take it to the top video, you'll see eyeliner galore. Little flock of seagulls, wham, kind of thing. It was yeah. Cool. Yeah. And it, it's it's got traction now so many years, 40 years later, which I, I kind of like. You know, people are bringing it back up going, oh, man, look at this. This is this is cool. He, he, had, retro school. he had the nads to do it back yeah. then when it was really cool to do it. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. with the mullets and yeah. all that. So there was a lot of fun. I mean, I'm sing I was single back then. You're a ball player in New Orleans. It's the only gig in town. Suffice it to say, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I bet. So, so now are you still are you close with the team? Yes, very. So I have a theory that Sean Payton is still kind of like ghost coaching this team. That he wasn't ready to leave just yet, and he. I don't know if he coached Sunday, man. Who, yeah, I don't know yeah. if he was involved with that. He was on TV. He was wearing a visor and a suit. It looked really strange. <laughs> I don't know if you saw Are you that. Kidding me? It was it was a strange look. It was wow. very strange. But I feel like I feel like he's Sean going Payton, with that look. He's still. he's got to still be involved to a certain extent with the team, right? I don't think so. No, honestly, I think he's he's a broadcaster for this year, and then next year we'll see him coaching again. You think Cowboys? You know, we know his history there. Who who knows? But you know, if he goes, the Saints get gets a couple of picks, nice picks. Yeah, yeah there's like true. Com compensatory oh, stuff. Oh yeah, that they get yeah. Some, you know, first round pick, I think. Yeah. What was uh? I, yeah. I don't know if we. I don't think I asked you this the first time. What was your? What's the one kick you like? Think about all the time. Like that was awesome. The 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 your favorite kick. There's a couple. There's one in Atlanta. My one of my first game winners, Kenny Stable. The snake was the quarterback, and he kind of. Uh, we needed a field goal to win the game. I was so nervous. I remember we were in Fulton County Stadium. It was like getting dark. It was like a late game, and. The snake goes down and gets me into like a 35 yarder. Calls timeout. He's standing by the, you know, and he had that draw, timeout. You know, you could just see him. And I'm coming on the field and he grabs me. Oh, I'll never forget it. I was nervous. My, my eyes are like f flickering, you know. I'm like, oh, uh, 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 I, I got to, now I, I can't screw this up. Snake just disarmed it. Let's go home, Morton. Mm hmm. Bad he knows yeah. I'm going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. The snake just told me, to go, let's go home. Well, oh, you're going goodness. home no matter what. But well, yeah. true. But, I, you know, <laughs> I took it as, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that one was cool. Um, 
The Kansas City one was a lot of fun. The Dwayne Rudd game, yeah. The NFC Championship game was fun, 38 in overtime. That was fun because yeah. you're going to the Super Bowl. You're going to the big dance, you know. Um, there was one in Philly that was really fun because they were throwing ice cubes at me as I was lining up for a 50-yard field goal in that, <laughs> the old vet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To put the game into overtime, and then in overtime, I had a 52-yarder to win the game, which we did in the snow and the ice and – bombarded with ice ice cubes and and chunks i mean it was coming down heavy from from the end zone it was wild yeah that's, that's philly how, how do you manage kicking in in the snow that always seems like it's the toughest it's thing all in about the, world. the footing i have this plant shoe that's really gnarly looking it's got all it's got these long kind of rubber suction cups on the bottom of it and it just grips right through any wet condition yeah I've, it's ugly real real ugly shoe it's not you know <laughs> you know, it's not a brand, I don't think. You made yeah. it yourself? I kind of just uh, had a Sharpie, and I just kind of did a logo, just a, a, an arbitrary logo. It has nothing to do with any logo that exists from a profitable comp- company. It was kind of mm-hmm. like my own. It was before they were branding shoes. Now everybody does their own shoes, right? They do their own shoes, yeah. their own causes. I was yep. do- I was doing my own brand back then, you know. It was like... I feel like kickers are like that too. They have their weird little things that they, it's, you know, they they get yeah. into the mindset that makes them comfortable, and then they get superstitious and they repeat those things. Did you have any really weird superstitions? Um, I had a routine, very, uh, very, uh, and I it bordered on psychotic. I would say, yeah. So two white socks on my left, on my kicking leg, one on my right, mm-hmm. and there was a sequence to how to put the uniform on. There was a sequence to the pregame warm-up. I would get to the stadium three hours before. I would, uh, you know, the whole thing was I would walk the hash hash marks. Yep. Why would I walk the hash marks? I would mentally rehearse if there were any bad spots. And then I would ha- I had a notebook. So I wrote everything down. I showed you that when yep. you came down. I wrote everything down. So 26-yard line right hash, vet stadium, a pitching mound. You know, because we played on pay- back mm-hmm. in the '80s, we played on baseball fields. Right. So it wasn't like now where it was multi-purpose stadiums we were playing in. So we, imagine going from 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 dirt to grass, or from grass to dirt, and try to get footing, and trying to figure out you're not going to be able to change cleats depending on because what now we got a first down. Oh shit! Now we're on grass, but we were on dirt. Right. Yeah. So I got to have not another shoe. It was like in Oakland. Not it wasn't even that long Oakland ago. Had Oakland had it. San Diego Miami. had it. Candlestick had it. Miami so, had it. Miami had it. all of them had it. So would yeah. you would you tell your team like, hey, uh, if you need to set me up for a field goal, can you try to get past the pitcher's mound, or can you? <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I would try, rather have the right straight hash. dirt. Give yeah. me straight dirt or straight grass. Don't give me dirt to grass or grass to dirt. Meaning, yeah. I don't want to start on dirt and end on grass, and vice versa. But if I'm on dirt, I'm on dirt. I go dirt to dirt all day. Right. I like that. Grass to grass. Dirt to dirt all on, day. Put that Easy. on a shirt. Dirt to dirt would all day. You, dirt would you rather day. go... <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Would you grass rather Grass to grass, fine. You'd rather go dirt to grass or grass to dirt? I don't want to do either, but if I had a choice, I would rather go grass to dirt because grass is a little higher, so I'm coming down, and I'm also... That first push-off, Yeah. I'm on grass. I don't... I'm not going to skid. I'm not going to like sachet like, oh, oh, you know, you mm-hmm. know how when you push off and the cleat doesn't catch? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a shitty, that's a real shitty feeling of lack of leverage. Yeah. What do you think so about think grass to dirt would be better? Grass to dirt. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Also, kicking off dirt just is, a, it's a different sport, it feels like. But if you're, if you can kick something. I feel like you should something. get more points off dirt. It's like a bunker shot. Correct. Like in golf. Yeah. I feel like you should get four points outside of 40 on dirt. And, like, if you missed it, then you maybe get another trot. No, that's not realistic. <laughs> I, I do like the idea of having a four-point field goal. What about um, – A 60 yarder should be four points. Agreed. What do you think about Justin Reed? Is he maybe the best athlete in NFL history? He's the safety on the Chiefs that's, like, kicking touchbacks. He was ripping the ball. He kind of made us look bad. He he kicked a fucking – I kind of was, like, pissed at him because I was like, he's, he's too good to be, play another position, and he's making it look too easy. And here we are making a living out of this. 
And here we are, like, spending all this time doing it, and he just goes out and wings it and bangs the ball. That, that kind of pissed me off. It made yeah. everybody be like, kickers aren't that good. Yeah. Because this right. guy, yeah, this guy just safety kicked, kick. He kicked a 65-yarder in practice. I don't want to hear he that. He shouldn't be allowed yeah. to do that. That's, That's bad. we got to cover that up if, if we, the we, kicker community has to. He wasn't part of the union. It's yeah. been a big community of silence for years that, like, yes, anybody can kick a 65-yard field goal. It's not that hard to do. And then he went ahead and did it for the cameras. I think you told me that before you came down and, and tried to hit a 40. Yeah. Well, I had a 45. Yes, you did. I had a 45. Now, some people are saying it's the thin you air did. in Colorado, but I was in a yeah. dome. And the altitude yeah. doesn't travel indoors. No. And so, I, <laughs> so it no, was it does not. never. It was thick air. Yeah, it was good. Um, no, but so that that's a little concerning to me that you have a guy that's like a safety and just goes out and bangs the ball. It would be like me playing great safety ball. I, it's not going to happen. Right, right, right. The matador at safety position is not going to. No, that, w- that does not work. Yeah. Are, you, are you looking forward to Adam Vinatieri? Uh, being up for the Hall of Fame because you yeah, like, hey, I think he makes it. here's another kicker. Yeah, let's like, go. Like we can hang out together. So we're soon we'll have our own room. Yeah, right? because that's th- that's three guys. Three and is, then, that's... and we can add Ray guys a punter, and then we got, of course, Blanda and and Gogolak. I mean, not Gogolak, Groza, and they were multi positions, but still they kicked. Yeah. So I kind of feel will like eventually be Tucker in there. will be there, and there's a couple other guys I think should be there, but. You know, this just Vinatieri would be big. I think Adam is there for sure. Yeah, he's the I mean, leading he made, scorer in the game. He, yeah, well, he made big Super Bowl kicks in shit weather. I mean, yeah, he's absolutely. He played forever, th- twenty three years. Yeah, twenty four maybe even. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I feel like he should be there. And um, Janikowski. Oh, that's a tweener for me. Yeah, I I just like to see him at the banquet. I also like <laughs> I the Jan- bar is going to run dry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Janikowski is one of those guys that like. If he just trotted out for the Raiders on Sunday, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, he's still there." Like I wouldn't, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Like he he was well, around he's still for playing, so long. yeah, right, right, like, right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, Janikowski's about to kick, right? Yeah, yeah. no, I, I I hear you on that. He's like the yeah the Tom Brady of yeah he kickers. was yeah he and and the, but I had that too for twenty five years yeah, you yeah. playing. Played for all three commissioners. That was kind of weird. I played for Roselle, Taggy, Boo, and Goodell. Yeah. Was there any uh, difference with how the ball flew depending on the signature on the ball? No, no. That's a good question, though. Uh, they were they were all pretty much embedded in that leather, so it didn't make a big difference. Would you ever accidentally kick a non-kicking ball in a game? Many times because the K-ball didn't come into play until oh, yeah. later. So we, we had these gnarly uh, right out of the – box from wilson in chicago with the wax on them yeah and uh i mean we had a whole routine where we try to get them a little better you know try to get the wax off of them try to make them a little fatter now they're just like balloons yeah are they why the ball's just flying they're juiced so in this era i don't know if you can say the ball's juiced because i don't know you know i asked the question put helium in the ball will it go further and didn't know I imagine it would, right? No. Well, I guess wind resistance also no. acts on the ball. No, it didn't do anything. Huh. Interesting. Did you, wait, maybe did you, have a scientist on to try to prove that one. It would be you, kind of a cool little... Um, like remember the shows experiment. they used to do? Yeah, Mythbusters. Yeah. Yep. Or the sports version. They yeah, sports science. Yeah. Sports science where they actually went in and, and proved or disproved a, a theory. Yeah. I kind of like that idea. Yeah. With the ball and the helium. I think they did that actually on one. Yeah, well, I feel anyway. yeah because I feel like so it's it's lighter, so you'd yeah. be able to strike it and, and hit it with more force, I guess, and would tra- start to travel farther. But then the wind resistance would act on it, and it'd I be don't, lighter, yeah, so I don't it, remember, would, but it would knock it down a little bit. All I know is when you st- if you strike the ball purely, it it's gonna go where you want it to go. Yeah, and uh, with with power and accuracy, you know that's a cool thing. What about the onside kick? issue that we're having these days why isn't there What's, why can't we just get an onside kick specialist why can't somebody just seriously? practice 24 I mean, hours i a day? invented that high i called it the anderson that high bounce where you slam it into the ground yep and then olindo mare kind of took it over and and uh, said it was his which everyone knows it's called the anderson yeah, yeah. i mean come on i know it is the anderson it's the so anderson bump it's the anderson it's a myth buster right there <laughs> yeah yeah you know the anderson and what was great about that thing was it, you could predict it. You could predict where it came down, 12 yards, right on the hash marks or outside, depending on where we overloaded. And then, of course, and we, we had great success. We did it in preseason. We did it on every kickoff in the preseason game. Like, we got like 70% of them back. Wow. 
So that was, we just wanted to see the numbers. Yeah. And uh, prove to us, and we could do it both ways. We could do it to the right, to the left. We could do it as a deliberate or a surprise, which was cool because you would take a normal approach to a kickoff, and at the last minute I'd go, ee, ee, and mm -hmm. boom. And then guys are sitting ducks there. Now we just got a guy that goes in and plays rebounding. And, yeah. And, and the first line just crushes them. But now rules have changed all that. You can't overload, can't take a running start. So you, you took a play that was league-wide, 26 28% success, and now it's... Like eleven, yeah, we were saying six to eight percent yeah, success. Yeah, yeah, so you took a, a you basically have done this to the kickoff. You've killed it. It's a non-play. It's a boring play now. Yeah. Guys are kicking it out of the end zone because they're kicking it from the thirty-five yard line with balloon balls. So you don't you don't have returns, which was I understand the the injury aspect to it, violent collisions. But there's no returns that I th – those were exciting. I mean, ask Deion Sanders. What if everybody did the, the Anderson now? What if you taught the Anderson to NFL kickers in well, today's they're doing rules? It. They are they doing it. Some, some guys are doing it, but the problem is now when you can't overload and you can't take a running start, the Anderson is not as effective as when you could do the, you know, the overload and the running yeah. start. Yeah, Because you would have your tall guys right behind the bulldozers. You'd bring the bulldozers in and, and level – it used to be such a great it'd play. Be, yeah, it would be chaos. Yeah. And it, 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 it is like we were, we were talking about that Jets comeback, the fact they return the onside kick. That doesn't happen anymore. So no. it's like you don't get those moments. These are non-plays team... now. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it makes the game less fun, I think. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it would be it, it, the, the down 14 with, you know, a minute and a half left. Mm -hmm. You It's really no chance it's going to happen because you got to get that onside kick. You kind of know it's going to be a little dribble. Thingy. Yeah. And maybe you get a bounce, and, one and guy maybe one dude it hits off his leg, and maybe it happens. But most of the time, guys just going to corral the ball, fall on it, and it's their ball. Yeah, it's game, game over. over. Yeah. Yep, yep. What about from a practice aspect when you were kicking? If you were to just put the ball middle of the field, forty yard line, or call it thirty yard line, so forty yard kick. How many? If, if you had to kick fifty balls, how many you make? I mean, I make f 50, forty yards and in, you make a hundred percent. You have to in the NFL. You cannot miss inside 40 yards, ever. So in practice, you now, would, did you would I? expect... Yes, I did. But in practice, but you'd expect to go 50 for 50? I would never go beyond 40 yards until I made 10 in a row inside 40 yards. So I could, I could put one 28, 32, 35, 37, 39, 36 middle, right, and, and spray them and, and, and make them all. Then I would go out and have some fun on the long balls, but never until I earned the right kind of mentally told myself I got to earn the right to go long yeah by crushing the short yeah because yeah. those are your money kicks really 30 to 45 yards are your money kicks in the NFL that's has where the to be majority, like 99 percent that's where the majority of the kicks are going to come that's where you need your point production you've got to have them yeah got yeah. to have them that's where the, uh, the long balls are sexy exotic oh look at me I got a big leg you know that kind of thing it, it's fun it's it's like a home run right at the end of the game, a walk-off home run. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes small ball works, though. Just yeah. get on base. Yeah. Singles and doubles all day. It yeah. plays, yeah. Yeah. Um, I So I had one last question, sure. rowback question. Mm -hmm. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, uh, rhoback.com. Use code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. Great stuff. Great golf stuff. So we talked a little bit about betting at the beginning. Do you uh, handicap games based on kickers at all? Like, are kickers – involved in yes how i think they are they now, are i don't so really how? bet a lot yeah yeah but, but if you were like how if would i was you... to bet i would say if, if the if a guy you just look at his point points per game right you look at what's his average you know i don't know i don't even play fantasy football it's although my kids do it's a lot of fun it's engaging but i would say like if you have a good kicker he's gonna he's gonna win you he's gonna win you at least three games for sure right mm -hmm. maybe more I mean, I, I averaged, I, I would say probably walk-offs, you know, impactful kicks. And they're all important because they're points. But, like, last five minutes of the game, I probably had three to four a year over 25 years, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. That's like 100 and some game winners yeah. in yeah. my book. Um, so I, I don't know how you would handicap because it's not really my, you know, like my thing. Yeah. But um, – I mean, the quarterback's obviously going to be the guy because he handles the ball the most. 
the receivers, the studs that catch the ball, right, and can make plays happen that way. Pass rushers that can affect the quarterback play by sacking them and people that snag the ball in the cornerbacks and things like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. What about uh, running like, backs? Not so much anymore, you know? No, no. no. Dying breed. Yeah. yeah. It's it's tight fast. end. Mm. Yeah, tight ends have kind of bit, become yeah. like wide receivers now. Correct. Yeah. They're more Kelsey, hybrid. They're hybrid. Gronk. They're hybrids. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. receivers with big, bigger bodies. Yeah. 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 Um, was there any team that you played against that was really good at uh, affecting your field goal kicking? Like from a defense, maybe – Maybe not even blocking a lot of it, but maybe coming close enough or hitting you after the fact. Did you ever get really – Steve Tasker in Buffalo, he was really good. Steve was good. He really – he screwed us in the Pro Bowl. I don't know if I told you this story, but we were uh... – so if you win the Pro Bowl, you can make more money than if you lose the Pro Bowl. And I had a game winner, a 47-yarder. Now, the rules in the Pro Bowl is you can't rush on field goals and punts because they – it's basically soft pads. Nobody wants to get hurt. Yeah. Right. It's the last game of the season – you're going into the off season. Come on, don't full out rush. So Steve Tasker is like, screw that, you know, I'm gonna block this kick. <laughs> so everybody's just like, eh, you know, and he just comes flying through. You're not supposed to. Uh huh. And takes it off my foot. <laughs> but there's no rule for that. Like <laughs> it's a it's an unwritten rule. And right? then I get blamed. Lawrence Taylor was pissed at me. He goes, you just cost us quarter million dollars, man. <laughs> I go, dude. I, he took it off my foot. Yeah, no one blocked. <laughs> Nobody, no, everybody just kind of, eh, and then the Red Sea opened up, and Steve Tasker, da 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 da. Eh, eh. That's tough. That's incredible. That's, and then you have that to answer rough. to Lawrence Taylor about it. Yeah, and that can't be. That's fun. not LT, fun. LT came at me hard. I was like, oh, yeah. oh sorry, dog. Let me get, yeah, get into the matador I just Googled it since. I'll buy you a Mai Tai later. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Steve Cas- Tasker never uh, blocked a field goal before that moment. Because, you know, it's hard to block field goals. I mean, he did. To... He blocked a lot, actually. Yeah. He was really good. Yeah. He's a guy I think ought to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame as a specialist. Him and Devin Hester. Yes, yeah. Devin Hester absolutely. You know, and be. I know I'm going to get pushback sometimes when I say that, but but Steve Tasker was a guy. You can't write the, the uh, history of the NFL without n- mentioning Steve Tasker and Devin and Hester. And Devin Hester, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. he was a game They Devin affected was games, game field yeah. position. Yeah. And All he blocked. He scooped and scored a ton of uh, – punts and field goals yeah he was re- and it was great in coverage yeah yeah i mean devin hester there was six years where it was just do not kick the ball to this man and even when teams tried to kick away from him he still would return him right yeah 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 um well this has been fun we always great fun to catch up with you yeah, it's, it's fun yeah. morton yeah. anderson hall of famer uh the great the dane. matador the matador i like we'll that. go with the great dane the da- yeah, okay, yeah the great, the great dane's dane. better than the matador yeah, okay, okay. inventor yeah. of the anderson yeah inventor of the anderson <laughs> that's how that's how not narcissistic known. hey don't forget <laughs> dirt to dirt yeah dirt to dirt all day all day dirt to dirt all day yes yeah <laughs> also um I, I might have a tryout coming up with the XFL. Right. I've been talking behind the scenes, so I'm dusting off the We'll do some Zoom, some Zoom calls? We might have to video? do some Zoom calls, and I don't know, maybe we can catch up and, and go Refresh out there, a course. Some. Yeah, because I'm – You can always come to Atlanta. It's been two years, so it's I haven't It's time for you to knock the du- – you know, Russ never sleeps. I'm trying to get up to 37 yards. That's my goal. Kick my own age. They say that's very hard to do. You're saying 10 out of 10? 10 out of 10 from in? 37 in. Ooh. I think we can do it. <laughs> That's high aspirations. I love it. <laughs> I think, I think I'll take that it. journey with you, bro. Uh, I think we I'll do take it. that journey. Billy's with you. got all the research chemicals necessary. <laughs> I, love I love it. Hey, thanks, guys. Well, thanks so much, Morton. Morton Anderson was brought to you by our great friends over at Curve. It's football season, which means you're buying beer, snacks, maybe even a new couch for the most premium watching experience. Whatever you're buying, if you're using a card for any purchase, big or small, you need Curve. Curve combines your entire wallet into a single card and app. With Curve, you upload your cards into the Curve app. Then, when you use Curve, you can swipe and indicate what card you want to use. Or, you can assign your card for certain purchases with the Smart Rules feature. Maybe you want a specific card to cover anything over 100 bucks, while a different, more rewarding card to pay for groceries. It's easy. You just set it and forget it. Curve also gives you additional cash back on top of any rewards that you're already earning on your other credit cards and your debit cards. So... Make sure to go to Curve.com slash Barstool to receive 20 bucks in Curve cash once you've downloaded the app, opened an account, and made a first transaction. Sign up at Curve.com slash Barstool to receive 20 bucks in Curve cash. Terms and conditions apply. All right, let's wrap up Firefest of the Week. Uh, Hank, before you do your Firefest, my f- quick 
I have another Fire Fest, but my real Fire Fest is we forgot to do the game time game. So, Billy, what game are you excited to see this weekend in the NFL? Bills Dolphins is mm. 175. Yes. Great deal. Yes. Great deal. Yes. 175 to go to that game. That's yeah. fucking. There's going to be points. There's yeah. going to be fireworks. Mm-hmm. In conference. Download the game time in app. Conference, yeah. yeah in conference. Wow. In conference game. Download the game time Better app. Better yet. <laughs> In division. In division. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That we're really getting to it. Download the game time app, go to the account tab to create a login, redeem code PMT for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Thank you to the game time app, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Uh Bills, Dolphins, hundred and seventy five. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's a that game is gonna rule. And there's gonna be a lot of Bills Mafia there. Bills Mafia, if you're going to Miami, game time app. Yup. Do it. Yup. And it's actually hundred and fifty five. If you use that code PMT for twenty dollars off, bang! What can you buy in Miami for twenty bucks, Big Cat? Anything, anything you want. Yep. Okay, Hank. Uh, my fire fest, besides uh, the Celtics coach getting suspended for a year and for having what? a disgustingly uh, messy public uh, for being too hot drama. Yeah, mm-hmm. that sucks. It, the only crime he did was his dick was too hard. Uh, Wednesday night. Wednesday, Tuesday, night? Tuesday, Tuesday night? night, Tuesday night, Tuesday night, Tuesday night, Tuesday comes before Wednesday, Tuesday comes before Wednesday to kill the two man. Uh, I wasn't even watching the game. I was just playing video games, minding my business, doing my thing. Oh, the, the, I, the let's get some context. He's talking about the Yankees game. Yeah, I was going to get there. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so I wasn't even watching the Yankees game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was playing video games and then I went to go use the bathroom. Number two. Sat down on the toilet, and right as I sat down on the toilet, I, I checked Twitter, as one does. Mm-hmm. The two-man. And I see, yep, it's two-manning on a Tuesday. <laughs> You're a big poop guy, Hank. <laughs> Huge poop guy. Uh, number two on this podcast in terms of being a poop guy. <laughs> yeah, well, that makes you the, the ultimate poopest poop, guy, poop yeah. guy. I see Aaron Judge hit a home run, number 60. Everyone's freaking out, and I see the score that they're down four runs. We've been having this ongoing bad sports town debate on this show. So I decided to make a joke both, you know, at the Bad Sports Town joke and at the Yankees fans' expense because fuck the Yankees and their fans. I like to troll them. And I said, this is embarrassing that they are celebrating this hard when they just went down from four to three in the bottom of the ninth. Are the Yankees a Bad Sports Town? Yes. I think I switched apps. like that. I, I sent the tweet out, switched apps, probably went over to Instagram, maybe Snapchat, who knows. Just doing my thing. Go back on Twitter before I even finish. I'm still in the process of, of two-ing it up. I'm still two-ing. Like it, still it, was, two-ing. it was three minutes later. You were two-ing on. And I, my mentions were, were blown to smithereens with people being like, oh, my God, oh, my God, you're a fucking idiot. What's the score? Check the score, bitch. Like, blah, 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 blah. Turns out Mike Stanton hit a walk-off grand slam, mm-hmm. uh, so the Yankees won the game. And So Aaron Judge's home run was important, and it, they should have cheered. It was very important. They should have cheered, and the fact that they cheered showed they were a good sports town, and the fact that they ended up winning in a grand slam made my tweet look idiotic, stupid, and I spent the night. Big Cat retweeted it. Well, it was a great tweet. I was I was behind in the game, so I was, I was watching the game on delay. You got blown to smithereens. I so. saw your tweet, and I was like, wow, that's a great point. And then when I got to real time, um, I was like, oh, my God, Hank, this tweet must have been really bad. Yeah, I got like a couple of bombs dropped on me, and then Big Cat just came over the top with a nuke. Uh, <laughs> and so I just got... I had to retweet that. I, I was just getting all types of mean tweets and messages, and, and people calling me all types of names, and it just it wasn't nice, and I didn't appreciate it. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, Sorry, I, Hank. I don't, I don't hate the take, though. I, I kind of like... It was correct I kind of like the fact, though, when the way that they hid the score... Yes, on on the video that they tweeted from the MLB account, so you couldn't see how potentially inconsequential that home run was. That was that was chicken shit. It was chicken. It was shit. a chicken shit move on on the part of Major League Baseball. I also hope I hope so badly that Aaron Judge hit sixty one, uh, and yeah, I hope he had sixty one and sixty two on Friday night on Apple TV. Yeah, and and just everyone's pissed off about it. And also, I, hope I don't. K is not on the call. I hope it's the like. The least important moment in the history of baseball, that's one of the most important moments. Yeah, I get why scumbags like Jake and Billy care, because it's like he's going for the Yankees record, but who gives a fuck? I do, because I have he's, that bet. Right. So you three care, makes sense. Well, I, I, hope in. You, I hope but, like, you win he's your going, bet. He's Thank going, you, but I hope you win sa- your bet, too. He's going for sixth place in the all-time home run record. Uh, yeah, who the, cares? At the same time, I kind of agree with Hank on that take, 
Well, like you, you're going to win but your I'm bet. I'm talking about the rest of the nation. You're going to win your bet. You're going to cash out. No, but at the same it. time, he plays in a Mickey Mouse stadium with Mickey Mouse fences. And if he played, I want to see how many home runs Aaron Judge would have hit if he played. What's the what's the farthest stadium? Well, City Field, Oakland, where he's going to play next year. Deep. I want to see how many home runs he would have played. He would have hit. In City Field this year, Mike Stanton's Grand Slam wouldn't have been out in Fenway, a didn't, real stadium. Didn't we look that up with, and the, with hit, real walls? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he hit more, not in the stadium. I don't know. Can we check that? Yeah, out? but not, it's not going to stop me from from spitting this takeout, though. That's the thing. I just don't get all the hoopla around it. I want to win my bet. I under okay. That's all I care yeah. about. W- whatever. It's a team record. <laughs> He's going for a team record. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. The person that that gave him his ball back, I think. Oh my god! You're Fuck! Wh- that's just Yankees fans in a nutshell. You're well within your rights to give it back. Bitch made. And he's basically I, he's like, yeah, Billy. We know that you're like an expert on ball contract. No, law. no, but I have a I have a take. Okay. Okay. I think that they're paying these guys a lot, but they don't make it public how much they're giving them because they don't want to raise the price for future type memorabilia. So all those times you're like, oh, this person's stupid for just taking that much. Yeah. I think they're getting paid off behind the scenes. Well, if I ca- if I caught his 61st or 62nd home run, this is what I would ask for for the ball. Uh, one, judge's bat used for the home run inscribed by judge two one of the jerseys worn by judge inscribed by judge three a hard ticket to the game inscribed by judge and four pictures with judge that was dan ravel cosplaying as foul ball guy he, i would he i would ask his demands darren ravel tweeted oh, he his said that's own what demands. he would do yes okay. that's his own demand i would ask for season tickets for 10 years i would ask for season tickets for life yeah what are they gonna say right legends no? tickets all right yeah I would okay ask, i'll keep he, the ball you know what i would do what? I would I would demand that Aaron Judge remain a Yankee after the season's that over. Would I would have held it hostage to make sure that Aaron Judge signs with the Yankees and does not go anywhere else in free agency, and then I give him the ball back. I it was funny because Ravel just tweeting out like, "Here's what my demands are for a ball I'll never catch." Um, there are a couple losers who are like, "I'd just give it back to him because he did all the hard work." A loser. No, you wouldn't. That's you're, stupid. You're going to look real dumb. Yeah, get, some, know, get something, no, dude. Big, big Cat, you're going to look real dumb when Darren Ravel catches, catches the ball. ball. Yeah. 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 I'm rooting for Darren Ravel. How cool would that be? He would. He, here's the thing, though. It looks that like the ball, coach. Be, you guys said you got It actually might be the biggest story in sports history no, but if Darren Ravel catches number you, 62. He won't be able to catch it. Hample went on vacation, by the way. Oh, Absolute fraud. What? what? Yeah. Did he bowed out the most important time? Brutal. That's Never meet your heroes. Wow. Um, no, Ravel wouldn't be able to catch the ball because that this ball, you're going to have to not only catch it, but you're going to have to complete a football move. Like, people are going to be going after you. Yeah. Like, he, it's going to be awesome. I think Darren Ravel would turn – he would turn into, like, a, a cornered house cat. That actually and just would, start, start scraping people with his nails. That would actually be the best outcome is Darren Ravel catches it and then someone, like, like forces a fumble and then he spends the rest of his life complaining about how he technically caught it. Yeah. Would be great. Would be great. Okay, good Firefest, Hank. Sorry Thanks. for retweeting it, but yeah. no, I'm not sorry. Great Firefest, Hank. That was awesome when I retweeted it. Loved your Firefest, Hank. Use code Hank. No, use code Jake. Type code Jake. Jake. Merchapalooza, use code, <sighs> promo Jake. code Jake. Jake. Billy, I'm going to ask Jake. you not to sign to our microphones. Yeah. Thank you. He's not Pro- mad. He's just signed. Promo deeply. code Jake on all the merch that you want. 10% off, right? Yeah. On the Barstool store, Jake. Promo code Jake Hank. for our Jake. boy. Jake. Yes. Hank. Jake. Thank Jake. you, guys. All There's- AWLs have to use promo code Jake. Hank. Otherwise, you're not. And AW. They're calling him Jake Merch. That's, that's the new nickname on the streets right now. Nice. That the, that motherfucker over there, he he moves product, as Erica Nardini would say. Uh, PFT, your <laughs> fire fest. Uh, my fire fest is I'm going to Knoxville, Tennessee this weekend. Big Cat, you're also going there. I will. The college football show, 130, I think, is our show. Yeah. I can't remember what the bar is. Uh, I will be at that bar doing some sort of wing contest versus thing. Will Compton yes with Will Compton I'm gonna do like bussin I'm gonna do a tour of the facility I'm doing a lot of stuff with macrodosing because Arian obviously went to Tennessee it's his first time back on campus Big T's a giant Tennessee fan his name is Big T so is he playing one-on-one we the agree hill. he might be the hill he might the be hill at the hill 130 at the hill so That's such a great college bar name yeah it is we're yeah. going to the hill so I've I've been looking forward to this weekend it's gonna be a fun time um but Knoxville, being a, a smaller city, doesn't have that many options for flights out. Yeah. And so I'm going to have to fly back on NFL Sunday as games are going on. Mm-hmm. On on a plane that I think will have TVs. Delta, right? Delta has TVs? Delta does have TVs, okay. but they probably will only have – they'll have whatever – CBS and Fox. CBS and Fox, yeah. CBS and Fox. So I'm going to be subjected to 
whatever those games are. I don't know how they determine what the local game is when you're on an airplane. I feel like it's usually just New York, so it'll be Jets Bengals. Jets Bengals. Luckily, PFT. You might only get CBS uh, then. Oh, With okay. Sling, they have the Red Zone channel. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I've done it on a plane before. If it's good oh, Wi Fi, nice. it'll work. Okay, well, it's uh, never good, good Wi Fi, though. Is if, give me the uh, Allegiant Air, the plane that's in the process of crashing that has the extra Wi Fi on it. Sounds that's, like you need Paramount Plus. I do have Paramount Plus. Great. Good call, Big Cat. Mm-hmm. So uh, it looks like I'll be totally covered this weekend flying back. But the point remains uh, flying during NFL Sundays, it's less than ideal. I mean, I, yeah, I took a red eye last week because I didn't want to do that. There's I was, no. I didn't sleep just so I could watch football. My other option would be like drive to Nashville on Saturday after the game mm-hmm. and try to fly back in the middle of the night. Mm hmm. But there aren't that many red eyes from Nashville. Mm. And time zones. And time zones. Uh, that's a bad airport for time zones. Knoxville's east, eastern time. It is. I, that's what I'm saying. But it's if you Nashville, go to Nashville, you're in Nashville. Central, yeah. Remember? Different yeah, time. That's true. I do remember. You forgot about time zones. You go back in time. Yeah. An hour. You don't want to fuck with the Nashville no. airport just no. in general. Yeah. So I don't. Carpeted airport, correct? I don't like carpeted airports. I don't think so. Man, maybe I'm thinking you of You can Orleans. sleep on them. Nah, but it's it's something about carpeted airports. Like, dude. People spill shit in airports. Where does that go? Yeah. I just stays there? I just don't forever? We have a carpeted studio. Well, yeah, yeah I know. And but that's like a... The like, coffee table. But an airport still... doesn't need to be carpeted. They Zamboni the carpets. Yeah. I don't trust that thing. So, yeah. I'm I'm very stressed out already about it. Yeah, that sucks. It does. It stinks. I don't yeah. know what I'm... Gonna... I'm, I'm still trying to... Fi- if you own a plane in Knoxville and you're looking to just let me tag along while you fly up to New York on Sunday, Sunday morning... Please let me know. What? What's that look, Hank? Yeah, someone hop in. Let, let, I, him, let him lock. Anyone let him know ride. anyone with a private jet? Wait, no, you, you well, opened I'm your not eyes. I'm going to the game. I went last year. It was a great experience. Love Tennessee. Shout out Doug's. Feels like 98. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to the game. I need to get home. I want to watch Wisconsin lose by 75 to Ohio State. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, okay, my fire fest is. I'm just like two weeks behind PFT, but I have. Quit Zen and I am, uh, yeah, I'm like four hours in and it sucks. Yeah. So, I'm, no nicotine anymore for these boys. I'm here to tell you it gets better. I'm gonna. I, I got some gum. I'm. I'm weaning myself off. I'm not strong enough to go cold turkey, but yeah, it sucks. But we're doing it. We're gonna be a nicotine free podcast on this side of the room. I'm. It. I'm, I'm ni- going nick free. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. What's on your desk? That's Max's. <laughs> <laughs> Hank went with. A, I'm holding it for a friend. Yeah. So, everyone, please be supportive. Yeah, We're just um, big cat. Just I'll be your sponsor. Whoa, Thank Billy, we'll let's not. Chips. Let's. I had actually quit, and then you came back with a hundred. Yeah, that is the part that I was right told. Now. No, I bought. I I just bought a hundred tins, but I'm quitting. <laughs> I, that's actually the best way to be able to quit something is to overdo it. Yeah, because you're not going to quit anything unless you reach a place where you acknowledge yourself. Like your rock bottom was spending a what. A hundred dollars yeah. on nothing but Zen at a given time. The tax was a lot. Was it? Yeah. I thought we gave you money because it was cheaper. It, it was cheaper, but the tax is still a tax. That's yeah. Billy's tax. Billy, yeah. No, no, it's not my tax. It's <laughs> Billy taxes. came back with so much Zen that it had to be put into a box with foam packing peanuts. Yeah. Which I mean, Zen isn't really fragile, so that's that's telling you how much Zen we had. And at that point, you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, okay, this might be... I'm done. It, it might be excessive at ten this point. Ten logs. Done. I'm done. Yeah, ten I'm logs. Done. So, Big Cat, it gets better. The first four days, in my experience, are the hardest. Yep. This, I'm going to do it. This Sunday is going to be <laughs> tough. I'm going to do it. What this Sunday is going to be tough. What are you laughing at? I just saw Netflix's tweet, PFT. What about... Yeah, I told you. They posted uh, George's... The meme. They're cl- they're, I got to focus. I'm shifting into soup mode. They're clout chasing on soup. Uh, it's, it's left and right. Brutal. I saw saw like three cartoons today. Just because it's fall doesn't mean now you get back into soup. It's not soup. chili season yet. It's soup, coming. Soup never left, bitch. Chili the, season might get here early. I saw next week it was like going to be in the 60s. That feels good. You know what meme has stopped though? That it's it's going to be fall. Time to start dressing. Oh, that that hasn't happened this season. Christian girl yeah, autumn. Yeah, I saw yeah. I saw one post, but it was like an ironic Christian girl autumn post yeah. today. Yeah. All right, Billy, uh, your Firefest. My Firefest is that turns out Yik Yak is not anonymous. The app that was very fun for colleges is not anonymous, and we found that out today because uh, someone threatened to blow up a nuclear reactor in the Utah University uh, University of Utah, University of Utah uh, Science Auditorium yeah. if they lost to San Diego State University. And uh, turns out it was a Yik Yak joke, and they found the person and arrested them. All time doctor is the mother moment. 
when yeah. I think all of us here were like football guy, and then it came out it was a woman. So yes. hand up. Yeah, respect to her. Yeah, respect. I yeah. just I think it's uh, it's disgusting how social media companies are just trying to censor everybody left and right these days, mm-hmm. and you can't even. You can't threaten to detonate a nuclear weapon on campus after a bad loss. That anymore. isn't even what she was doing. She was just rooting for her team. Yeah, it's disgusting. You can't root for your team. Anymore. It's it's yeah. Orwellian, is what it is. Yeah. You can't root for your team, otherwise you'll go to jail. Yeah. Uh, also, that's kind of to be honest with you, that's like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. That I'm not talking about like the the proposed detonation of it. It fucking rocks that the University of Utah has a nuclear reactor. Yeah, apparently yeah. Purdue does too. So yeah, I that stop makes sense. They're pretty Purdue easy jokes. to make. Oh God! Oh, oh God! God. Oh, Jake, <laughs> that's my fire fest. Jesus now. Christ! Um, that's America's fire fest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. Sorry, no, Billy's been scout. reading about how to no, make no. your own nuclear. A boy this scout. is why you need to use promo code Jake <laughs> because we can't have Billy have just ten thousand dollars to go oh, build. No. Nuclear. Well, you know that what I'm going to do with it if I win. I'm going to put all of it on a Thursday night football game. Next yeah, we've Thursday. been through this. Yeah. You're not giving it, it to charity. Billy's trying. Then to, we're going to donate the winnings from if it wins so you or get if to it keep loses. It. So yeah. you're you're no, trying I'm to act donate. like your chari- this whole thing was for charity when in reality it's to have you win money and then have you bet on the game and then if you win extra money then you give the extra money. Correct. Away. No, making you I look will, like you a know hero. What? I will pledge because I just wanted to show that I was able to push merch. I will donate all of it. And the winnings. I already said I'd buy, every, I'd buy use no, every I will, dollar to buy PS5s my word, for the my word I said right I'd take I a do- sick vacation. I nice. will donate all of it. Okay. 25K what more, plus what the more could you Billy, want? Why, why don't Promo you- code Billy. I will put that in writing. I'm saying it on the podcast. I don't even want the money. I just want to show that because I'm in There's third no right now. There's no way he's going to donate all of it. Do you want to make a bet? I will, I'm saying it right here. Yeah, I'll make it a $25,000 bet. What? Also, Billy. Yeah, I'll donate. Billy, what if you promise to enlist in the military if you win? That's just ridiculous. I'll, I'll actually. All, all in I just want to show you. Win. Military if I win. Yep, same. <laughs> yeah. Same. Okay. Yeah. I'll match. All right. No, but like <laughs> seriously, like I actually was pushing the most merch on the first day. I was number one until the. Oh yeah, we happened. got one update two yeah. hours in, and Billy was like, "It's over." Yeah. I was number one for like most of yesterday right. until the stripper came. Until I didn't the stripper even came. know that the yeah. seven the, days. Yeah, I didn't know You're the hanging contest. a banner after the first day. <laughs> I didn't know the contest. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Yeah, look. From I'm he's just not saying, mad. Just so everyone knows, mad. Billy's I'm not, not mad. mad. He's not I just mad. wanted to show that I was could do something. And yeah, and Billy, guess what? Mission now, accomplished. But I'm being. But I'm being. But attacked. if you don't finish in the top ten, like what have you shown? I'm Nothing. gonna look. There's the funny part I'm just, is I'm Billy's just going away till payday. People are gonna get their paychecks. Then we're gonna hit them with some serious sales pitches. Billy thinks that he's being attacked. I'm not re- being attacked. Everyone's you ju- saying you literally just said a second ago, and now I'm the one that's being attacked. Well, verbatim. Because like every like I just started to do well. Then you're all like you know. Hating? No, you're all being haters. We're, I'm no, not hating at all. Billy, you're all being haters. What happened was you got off. You you got off to, to a in lead. The we started pumping up Jake's promo code because we just wanted Jake to win. It had nothing to do with you. And then you thought that everyone was attacking you because we were promoting Jake. I also didn't even know the contest was live for Billy's lead. Like the time I realized that it was live was like, oh okay. And then you were already out of the lead. By the way, this well, is exactly what Hank third. wanted the entire time. I know, Puppet Master Hank. When Hank d- developed this contest, he wanted it to turn to the Hunger Games. But you're not where mad. Where we have though. everybody taking, I'm, I'm literally taking shots at mad. each other. This is a, we're playing into Hank's hand right yeah. now. We need to, we need to, re- re- we need to look ourselves in the mirror and say, why are we attacking each other when we're being manipulated by our boss? Yeah. I just know I can do it by myself and get to the top. Let's go, Billy. But use promo code Jake. Jake, promo code Billy, please. He's not mad. Uh, promo code Jake. Uh, my fire fest <laughs> is I got my flu shot earlier this week. So um, did I. And I've been sore in the neck and oh, the arm. Oh, my God, Jake. It's been tough. Come on. No. Heating pad, biofreeze. Oh, my God, Jake. Anti-bat. I got it, too. It did not. Yeah, it got me bad. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, okay. yeah. Did you get it last year? I don't think so. I actually got it, and I forgot I got it. So, like, the next day I woke up, and I was, like, went to take a shower. I was like, why do I have a band Oh, yeah, I got a yeah. shot. Also, I have an anti fire fest for you. Oh. Boborowski just retired. Oh, nice. Big Ten. Fuck Basketball him. official. See you never, bro. Yeah. He's the, he was the worst. The worst. Um, so, yeah. Okay. I just checked the standings again. Yep. Jake, you're still ahead of Billy. Nice. Thank you. But we got work to do. What Jake, about the not mad standings? Uh, the not mad, Billy's still number one. Okay. Nice. And not mad. Nice. But I'm third nice. overall. Nice. nice. By myself. Yeah, but number one. Not mad. And not mad. not mad. All right, He's numbers. Well, mad. actually, honestly, we're still in the money. Yeah, you're right. the least mad person. The least mad. And if I'm in the money, then I don't have to. <laughs> actually, never mind. All right. 
Okay. Hey, I'm have you ever won this? <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Uh, merch contest? Number one. I keep, I'm, the reason I'm on why the leaderboard. I'm climbing up. You're not mad. What was your number? I'm climbing up the, the leaderboard. Oh, Hank, what? how the hell did you get in seven? Hank's What's winning number, his Hank? own contest. I'll tell you right now, Billy, the car stick 3.0, now available on sale. Oh, that's that's interesting that it was released right now. It's great for uh, opening cans, bottles, and lots of other uses. Like what? In the car? Like what, Hank? It's it's a three to, it's a 360 invention. There's thousands of uses. <laughs> it's actually true. There probably are thousands of uses for that. Like if you want to check someone's uh, knee, what do you call it? The reflexes. Reflexes. Yeah, if you're a doctor yep. and you want to use, you want to use like a, a a beer bottle opener to check somebody out medically. Yep. Uh, just lots of uses. Probably use it as a fishing lure. Yeah, you could do that. Um, it looks like you could scoop stuff with that if you're like baking a cake. All right, numbers. Like a tiny cake. So yeah, can, yeah. If you're trying to measure out some flour. If you're baking like one individual cupcake. And you're looking to measure the sugar to put on top of the cupcake. That's a perfect device for it, Hank. Perfect. Yeah, if like you, you know, I I make Cheerios. I like to do plain Cheerios to sprinkle a little sugar on top. That's mm -hmm. a great scoop it right out. Yep. There you go. Beautiful. It's Dunk exactly it one pinch. Yep. Um, numbers, Hank. You ever won this? The ball machine? No. In this season yeah. of it? Or any season? No. All right. <laughs> um. <laughs> 64. Three in honor of the Car Stick 3.0. Available now. Use promo code Hank for ten percent off. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with eighteen in honor of Rosh Hashanah. There we go, Jake. I'll go with twenty six. Okay, Billy sixty nine, Max twenty. I have sixty four. Oh. Seventy one. One guy did hit me up, said that they had 99 in that brief second. They were ecstatic. Sorry to that guy. 71, which is dented. Wow. Love you guys. Bat bites can occur without the victim even knowing.